so the project deadline is almost here so i thought i'll just create this marathon so this will be so the next uh, i don't know how many hours i guess around uh, 10 to 12 hours of content would be me marathoning the entire mad one project uh, with just the obviously just the basic requirements i won't be dealing with apis in this but i will go through how to make each page how to make each requirement what is my thinking process while making it so uh, if some of you are stuck uh, in some um, bug you can obviously search it up on google but let's say some of you are stuck on how to think or how to uh, proceed with the functionality how to think about making it so i'll just create this entire project so i will create all of the features which is required and i'll walk you through each step of my thinking process i'll also make some mistakes in the way obviously cuz uh, you can't uh, so if someone is not making any mistakes then you can obviously think that uh, that tutorial is scripted so i will not be doing this uh, a second or a third time that this will be my first time making this and so yeah i will make some mistakes but then i'll fix them and i think the way i make the project the way i make mistakes the way i try to find where the mistake is from and then the way i fix the mistake will help you understand even better how to go about doing the project and then you can maybe in this uh, two remaining days uh, create your entire project and submit it so the purpose of me doing this is not to show that i can do it in two days but to show that even you can do it in two days so i hardly uh, took uh, i would say 5 or 6 hours each day so a total of 12 hours so if i can do it in 12 hours obviously you can also do it in 12 hours so yeah so i'll now switch to my past self where i will be uh, working with a blank slate and i'll end up making uh, this version of the grocery uh, booking application in this video i don't know how long this is going to be but i'll try to basically uh, create this application development one project for this term which is grocery store so the problem statement is released for like more than two months now and the deadline was supposed to be yesterday but it's extended till the 13th of august so i'll just take this time to go through a uh, method of approaching the problem statement and then if possible in one single video I'll try to create the entire project obviously it can't be done in one sitting so it will have some cuts in between but it should be spanning like real time one day or one and a half day maximum ok so the admin and store manager login and user login so we can obviously use flash security or flash jwt but as this is mad one and that is not a core requir requirement but it is a uh, optional requirement so i will not be doing that i'll just use a simple form with username and password uh, these are simple creds so we will be doing this uh, buying and so this we will implement in two steps first carting and then buying we'll just open figma and create a basic wireframe uh, obviously we'll also have to have the search so i think i'll implement this in the end because does not depend on any other functionality okay so as you can see I've done it for my mad project also so it is something you should do although it's not required so I'll just create a new file and I'll name this mad one person all right so let's first yeah it's okay. yeah let 
let's create a background of normal 1080p because the web page will mostly be run on desktops so yeah this will be 1920 and this will be 10. all right so we are ready with the canvas so wireframing itself can take like five six days if you're doing it very thoroughly uh, my approach is just to go through how to do it so i won't do it for a very long time so i'll just go through the so let me just sketch the initial one and then i will do it properly okay so how i'm planning it to be is first we'll have a page where we will log in so first we'll have login obviously sign in also has to be there but that is a one time thing so i'm not including in it in the workflow so i'll keep the login very simple it will be user name and password that's the simplest way of authentication obviously we can also do uh, very different things like OTP and all but that will require very highly personalized and like it may need some APIs like Twilio so we won't be using that we will use a simple username password but because it's a very like highly required skill I will still be using password encryption so hashing basically so we won't be storing the password directly in the database all right so as I said we'll have a database which will store the uh, user details so this will basically check with the database and if it's fine if it's not fine obviously we'll come back here if it's not fine if it's fine we'll go to the so this is for the user one thing to note is for grocery management we will have two types one is user one is admin so basically regular user this is regular user All right. So, for the regular user, once he logs in, we will obviously have a place for him to search. So, he can search for items, just like Amazon. So, just let's uh, let's take a look uh, to Amazon because it can be our inspiration. Okay. So, we can see that uh, we can search here. So that is the top. We won't be implementing pin codes and all. And we'll have a cart and we'll have my orders. So something like that. So on top, we'll have a cart and we'll have a previous orders. If we have time, I can also implement uh, my profile. So there I can just edit basic profile details. Yeah, that will be and as such after that here we will be having uh, the categories and the products so uh, we can obviously implement it in a very stylish and sophisticated manner but for the sake of demonstration I'll just show each category so let's say category is electronics so each will have their own card like this and in their card we will be showing smaller cards which will be products now for products we can add pictures but then we'll have to basically implement the file handling so file upload file storage everything I may implement it if we have time otherwise because it's not a requirement we won't do it so this will all be the products p1 p2 p3 and we'll be able to for each product we'll be able to enter a quantity and then add to cart so that can just be a plus or a cart button so we'll enter the quantity and if it's so one thing we can do is if it's but by default we can fill it with one so they don't have to go and type one so by default it will be one and if they want they can increase it or decrease it 
so these will then be added to cart so once we are adding it we won't change the page it will still be in this page but it will now be going to the cart so when we go to the cart it should show them so the top part will remain the same there won't be any search functionality inside the cart it will just show them all the so we can do it in a simple table manner so cart details and it will show them all the things they have in their cart so product id we may show them actually for a user it's not important so not required the product name will show them and then the category we can show them if you want and the price the quantity and the total amount that will be price times quantity i'm not implementing any discount but obviously you can do that too so some of you have already implemented discount and all so that we can do but in order to keep it simple i'm just doing this okay and then we will have a buy button so this is important so once they are buying this is so we are not making any payment or any module because this is just the mad one project but basically once they click on buy it is assumed that it is finalized so payment is done and all and the cart will become empty so cart for that user becomes empty and the basically all the things which were there in the cart that moves to the orders table so uh, this will just show a thank you page uh, or maybe the thank you will be smaller than this but uh, here we'll have the order details order details and here will basically show the same thing and we can also show a total like grand total which we can show here also that's fine all right so for the user side in the search as we can see it's mentioned to be able to search for multiple things but i'll just do it for the name we need to search based on section category we need to search based on price manufacture date etc so i will not implement these because once you have implemented this doing this is simple enough so you just have to have a few uh, just one drop down here search based on what and whatever you choose it will send that as well to the form and then the controller based on that input will search ability uh, i may actually do this okay. ability to add multiple products in a cart obviously we'll be doing that i don't know why it's in the search okay by yeah yeah we'll also have to keep a tally of how many items are there in the stock so this will basically reduce the quantity from the actual inventory uh, yeah total amount obviously so this will require some javascript i won't be doing apis in this session most probably because creating apis will take some time i'll do validation the simple ones we won't be doing any optional we may do some styling uh, definitely not aesthetics uh, no proper login system no export import i can do a separate session on this uh, but in this session we won't be doing that predict demand these are not required okay so this is basically how it will be for the user side now for the admin side we will require a separate set of pages so the admin also will be logging in so I won't have a different logins because it's wasteful. One login page is enough. So the same login page, which is username and password, if it sees that the user and the username is an admin, it will so it'll check from the database as usual. And if it sees it's a admin, so wrong will just come here. And if it's a admin, then it will go to the admin dashboard. So the admin, let's see what powers he has. The admin has the power to 
create delete update and obviously see the products and the inventories okay uh, one way to do it very simply would be have add category and we will show all the categories like this as a table so this will have all the categories so this is basically categories and we'll have a few action buttons we'll have uh, add products in this we'll have edit so like editing the category so not any products but the category itself we will be having a delete so if they want to delete the category we also have to make sure how to handle deleting because admin cannot just go on deleting products which someone has bought because that will cause a problem so but because it has remove a product with confirmation and remove a section from confirmation we will have to implement that obviously well that's not a good idea to remove and well okay actually i won't be having the add products here so we'll have a open where we can see all the product details of that category we'll have the edit and we'll have the delete so for open it will open products of that category so it's uh, products of category equals let's say c1 so here we'll have the products p1 p2 p3 and this will be in exactly similar way as this so we'll have the details and then we don't need a open button anymore we'll have a edit so create um, and we'll have a add button here so create read is obviously there update and delete so that should be correct for both and admin doesn't need to do anything else so this should be enough create read update delete for categories and products we can have a dashboard but uh, i don't feel it's very important so we can do that in the end if we have time so the dashboard can show important statistics like number of users number of this number of that that is not really hard we just count the rows in the database and show it all right so uh, i think we have done the wireframe basically you don't need to do it again in figma but just to demonstrate how you would be doing it if you had a actual amount of time in your hand so i'm doing it uh, in like one day so i'm not going to do it very properly but just a small demonstration so let's say i'm making this page first so obviously you'll have multiple copies of one second yeah we'll have multiple copies of the page because we will be drawing just like this multiple states so we'll have multiple copies and let's start with one copy so we'll have a text which is username and uh, fill should be let's say one one. and the size should be more than this okay and we'll have password and that's pretty much it we also have a few rectangles for the input boxes okay so i'm not designing it very nicely just enough to give you an idea how to do this so basic login input so uh, 
and this will work as both admin login and uh, oh and I forgot to create the sign in like sign up page register page so I don't like the terms sign in and sign up is they're like very confusing so I prefer login and register so register will basically add a user so a good uh, way of doing this is you cannot add admins directly because then anyone can just create an admin and then log in as the admin so that's not secure obviously user adding should be possible so let's just focus on the user register so for the user the details we can obviously collect m many details but the basic details are username password and name obviously we I don't think we need date of birth unless you want to do age listing like some items you can mark as adult and only adult can buy it and I don't think we need to do that obviously you can do that so that's also one of the ideas uh, but then if you're doing that you won't be storing the age because the age will change we'll store the date of birth and then calculate the age using the current time uh, let's see what else I don't think we need to store anything if you are if you want to make it fancy you can also like make a profile picture upload so there they will choose a file and that will be the profile picture but I'm not going to do that uh, that seems to be enough so we'll just create a user and because we are not using any proper login system the way I'm going to approach admin is we'll have a default admin which will be admin admin and so it will be like by default created and only admin admin can log in and after login in admin admin can change his password okay so we have to add from this profile from here we need to be able to change the password so yeah so once the admin logs in he can change the password so no one else can log in and users obviously can also change their password but that's fine so the register is only for users and not admin so there will be a single admin in this but we can obviously also add multiple admin if you want then you'll have to handle it separately all right so let's say sorry yeah and let's just use this sorry yeah so one more thing in figma is basically if uh, multiple things form a component so let's say these two uh, these two are forming the username component so I'll group them by using control G so now they're a group so now I can easily move them together and do multiple stuff with them together and similarly this I will group and then these two groups are part of the form so I'll group them and then finally this entire page is a page so I'll group them by doing this I can then simply clone it and it will clone the entire page but in this so I'll rename this to register and this to login so in this it won't it will not be login it will be register and along with this so this I'll move a little bit up and then go inside and I'll clone this so this will be name okay okay and so the login and register pages are designed so obviously this is not the beautiful design so this is just very simplistic just so that it works so obviously if you are doing it for your portfolio you will make it more beautiful but at this point i don't care about that so then we have to design this the main user page so this will be a little cluttered so let's start first we'll have the top bar so let's make it uh, almost light and then have a stroke in the bottom and we can make it let's say a little thick okay, so in the top bar we need the user account uh, i think i'll keep it at the rightmost end so i think it's oh yeah We'll add a circle which will depict the user account. Okay, so this is basically so we'll have a stroke for that. 
Okay, and I think I have an extension for yeah, symbols. So all these obviously extensions and all you can add like this. So you have to add the extension and then you then you can run from this. So Figma in itself is a very complicated and like very powerful tool. So you have to learn it. Yeah. So we have a user icon. So I'll just import this. Make it big and circular. Yeah. So I think we don't need the ellipse directly. We can use this. Yeah. So that will be our profile. And then we'll also have uh, cart and my order. So this should be black. Let's say. Uh, cart with a smaller size. So let's say forty-eight. This will be centered, and we'll have something like previous orders or oh, let's just orders they should be equally distant okay fine so that seems to be enough so we have a user have to make it centered yeah we have a user we have a orders and we have a cart And we need a search, but that will be in a separate place. So here I can, let's say, add the company name. So maybe, I don't know, Grofers is a trademark. So grocery, something like that. So then we have the search. So the search will be... another line so here we should be able to input the search so this will be the search bar where we type the search key like what to search and let's make it white and we'll add a stroke why not and some radius okay so then we need a button which will make the search so this one has to be let's say we can make it anything i'll make it a uh, let's say B. and we'll have a text in this which will be search Or we can have just the magnifying glass icon so that's also fine and here we'll let them choose so on the left we'll let them choose what they want to search so maybe this has to be a little smaller this has to be a little bigger basically here they will choose so i'll have a drop down and if you can search using drop down yeah We'll have a drop down here. One second. Okay, yeah. So the this will have multiple options like product title. So let's just see what are the options for search. Uh, the section or category name, the price, manufacturing date, etc. So I don't think I'll add manufacturing date because it will require a separate input. You can obviously do it. Uh, I'll add price section category. So let's just show the default one here. So that will be okay. Section category. Okay, this is a uh, this is the same thing. So search based on the category or so I'll also have a product name so let's just make it product name so 
this will be black and the size will be small but not so small okay so similarly they will have other options in the drop down and after that we'll just have cards so i'll quickly just group these so this this and this button this is obviously a loop and then this end so this end and then this x is a loop and then this loop this loop and this loop and the other is a loop and here this this and this is a loop this is quite a loop and then this loop and the other loop all right and finally we'll have the each category will be a card so let's say so obviously it will be scrollable but for me to show i'll just uh, make it a little smaller so it's visible and let's say we'll have a text here that will be the category name so let's say the cat first category is electronics so it will be like this and then inside we'll have smaller cards so each card is a product basically and let's change the color and actually you can make it bigger yeah so we'll have the product name so Let's say first one is earphones, and let's see what other details do we need for a product. We need the quantity available. We'll have that uh, available fifty, and we can have other details also like date of manufacture but i don't think that is important and the price yeah p is 6.99 okay yeah there will be a quantity field where they will fill it so this will be a input text box and by default you can have you have the one inside Right, should be padded. Okay. Yeah. And I think smaller. Okay. Finally, we need a add to cart button. So button will just be a rectangle. And yeah, let's make it rounded and let's make it green. Why not? Assigning to cart is a good thing. color palette is not so good but yeah in the end we will be using bootstrap so it will take care of it so here I'm just eyeballing which color looks good add to cart I won't be giving an option to buy now because it's the same thing so I'll just let them add to cart and then buy okay and basically so now we'll group this and now we can just copy this group so yeah that's basically how it will look and like let's say if there's more than four then it will just go to the next row so it's not like it will keep on expanding that way and we can make them equidistant and then this 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 and this is a group and we can just clone the entire thing to make it another category so let's say the next category is furniture oh. 
そうですよ、ね、ちゃん。え、それが全然違う。So that is basically how the main page will look. The only things left is the cart page and the orders page. So yeah, so then this, 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 and this is part of one. And then this, and this, and this, and this is part of one. This is the two, this is the two, which is called the reason. And then we'll have similarly for the cart. So in the cart, we'll not have a search. And we'll not have this. What we'll have is a simple table. So we'll have, so let's say we'll have a big text. It says cart. And we'll just have a buy now button. And this will be. Alright, so this will basically be buy now. Or let's say just buy. And because it's a CTA, let's make it bigger. And it's the only CTA in this page, so let's make it bigger. And this also. And we'll have the details. So. Typical like the, we'll have a table headers, so product, and then category, price. We may not want, need to have the category there, but just in case, I've kept it. Price, quantity, total amount. And then I'll have all the rows basically. So these exercises will be so and let's have what like carted a your phone. Which is I think six ninety nine. And that is six ninety nine. And then, so I guess this is part of the group, right? Yeah. And then another thing I've got it is check. Check, check, check. And then finally, we'll have a total. Oops, sorry. We'll have a total here. Which will be the sum of all this. So. So now the only thing left is the uh, order page. So let me just group these things a little quickly. We need the orders page. So I'll just clone this carts page because it will be more or less similar. Okay, so. This will be called orders, and it will here. It will not say card. It will say order. Maybe order details. So a button won't be there because we have already bought it. And yeah, pretty much the same thing will be. And let's say we'll have a, a a text telling that the order is confirmed. So So that's pretty much it for the users. For the admin, as I said, we'll have. Like this, 
so the only thing left is the products page and the categories page so let's design that And then similarly we'll do this for the products page also. So I can just clone this entire admin dashboard and this is for products. So that seems to be about everything. Uh, one more thing is we need the user page. So when we click on this, so we should be able to edit the password. So I'll just quickly add that as well. All right, so I guess we are ready to start actually developing this application. Before that, we also have to create the database design. So let's see. Let's think about this in a new page. All right. So the database, the first and most obvious table is user. So each user will have uh, user ID. So I'm tempted to make the user name itself a uh, primary key and the user ID, but it is generally not a good idea because we are letting them edit their username here. So we'll keep a user ID which is a primary key. So this is a P key, and obviously it's unique and it's not null. Next up, we'll have the username. So the user ID will be auto-generated. They don't have any control over it. It also won't be changed ever. So the username will be not a primary key. It will be unique and it will be not null. Next, we'll have the password, but not the password directly, the password hash. 
so pass hash that will not be primary key that will not be unique that will be not null and for a user we're not collecting any other okay name yeah so we'll have the name so this is just for formalities we won't be using it anywhere and it can also be null also i guess yeah okay next up we'll have the products so products are the heart of this application obviously without a product nothing matters okay so the first thing we'll have obviously is a product id so let's just call it id i think i'll go ahead with just id okay, so we have id it is a primary key it is unique and it is not null next we have the name of the product so the name of the product is not a primary key it may not be unique but it is not null so it, it has to be present next for a product we will have the category id so we have not created the category table yet but once we do we'll have an id here id there primary key so it will so this is a foreign key to that it is not unique obviously and it is not null a product cannot exist without a category but a category can exist without any products okay what else details will we have the availability and the price so quantity quantity is not a primary key it is not unique but it is not null all right and we'll have the price actually we did not uh, make the pages for these so in the categories the open page is this one okay but the edit and delete so basically what i can do is for edit you can just add a javascript pop-up and if this as I say okay i can directly delete and come here we don't need a page for edit oh and for add yeah so we need a page and just design it very quickly So we'll just add the manufacturing date here. Man date. And this is not a primary key, this is not unique, but this is also not null. Same for the price. Okay. So I'll just so the product table will have the id the name the category id this is a foreign key quantity price manufacturing date okay so these are the basic tables uh, we'll also have the category table but it won't have much so category is just a grouping so it does not represent any discrete quantity so it will just have the id which will be uh, p key and it will be unique and it will be not null and then we'll have a category name like electronics and all okay so it won't be primary key it will be it won't be unique and it will be not null okay so that's all we have for the basic tables now we'll need a few special tables so as you know a user which is an entity 
and a product which is entity user and uh, category they never interact directly but a user which is entity and a product which is entity they can interact in two ways so one relationship between a user and a product can be that this product is in the cart of the user so that is carting now one user can have multiple products in his cart so obviously this is this side it is many and one product can be carted by multiple users given that many items are available okay and one user can or cannot cart anything but a product has to be actually no a product can also be carted by no one also okay so because this is a many to many relationship so m is to m a many to many relationship cannot be stored directly in a table like directly in the entity table so we'll have to create a separate table for the relationship also one attribute of the relationship is the quantity so how many quantities of the product he has carted so for that we'll create a join table so this is called a join table so this does not represent a separate entity but a relationship between entities so so this join table will be called the cart or the cart relationship so in this cart the first thing which we will store is the user id so user id is a foreign key so just like this category id points to this id just like that this user id points to this user id next we'll have the product id so we need both information which user and which product is carted so this is obviously this this id okay so we'll have the user id and the product id both of which are foreign key both of which are not null also so it won't be unique but it's not null and finally we'll have the quantity because that is also some uh, like the quantity of a product is different so this is how many items are available that is this is how many items are carted by that user so this is not a primary key or a foreign key but this is also not null so all of these are not null okay and we also may require a unique cart id for all of these uh, we may or we may not so that is not part of the uh, schema but then we may have to synthetically include it so that we'll see as we go along and then similarly for the orders also we'll have a join table which is called orders so there we will have the first key that this is also very similar to the cart so everything which is in cart will then uh, eventually be moved to the orders once they place the order so this will also have the user id or uid this will also have the pid this will also have the quantity now here i am assuming the admin will not change the prices so i'm not storing the prices and i'm directly referring through this but if you want to store the price and let's say the price is then later changed so the order history it should show the price at which you bought it and not the current price so we can store the price here so this may look like it is redundant but this is not actually redundant so this is the lock in price so the price at that point when you bought it so the total price then can just be calculated using this we will also store a order id or let's say a transaction id so this will be same for all the transactions done once so this is not unique so basically not unique so obviously because it's not unique it's not primary key also this is not nullable so all of these are not nullable and the uid is the foreign key the pid is the foreign key 
this is just a value and the price is also just a value and we can also store the date of the transaction so date time basically and this is also not nullable so for a transaction this is enough we may have to synthetically add some id that we will see so we'll have a transaction id so let's say a person buys a b c three products at once and then d e two products again so each of them will have a separate row in this table so there will be total of five rows in this table but the first three will have transaction id one next two will have transaction id two all right so that is basically the schema design we may have to change a few things as we go along so i have not created this project yet so i'm just doing it as we go along okay so i think it's time then we can start actually writing code and everything so the first thing which we'll have to do is we'll have to create a folder so just go in the projects and i'll create a folder let's say grocery okay so now that we are in the folder uh we, we can just start writing the code in app.py files and all but a usually good thing to do when you start a project is first initialize the git repository okay so as you can see i have now initialized an empty repository here so you can see the status there is nothing done okay like till 1970s 1980s this would have been enough but right now we also add the git to the github so i'll just uh, create a repository on github also i will create a new no i will push an existing local repository so basically this one which i just created path is this repository name is this description i will leave blank and for now i'll keep it private because the deadline is not yet over and yeah i'll add this remote remote will be origin yeah okay okay so next step is creating the first commit so i'll just create a git ignore file yeah so i have created a git ignore file and let's say i'll store the vn so i will not version control the vn folder so i just write vn here so you'll see how this works later on so i'll just do this so right now my git status is this untracked file so i'll add this and use my shortcut and yeah, I'll commit this. So the commit message will be added get ignore file. Alright. So now we can push it. And now it's pushed to my repository. Great. So now we are ready to start working. So obviously you can follow Tejas Jensen's uh, project structure, but I would say for someone starting out it would be a little overwhelming. So let's just start with a very basic structure. Right now we have nothing. We'll create a directory for the templates. So we have the templates and we'll create a directory for the static. I forgot if it's static or statics. Let me just search. Yeah. So for static files, it will be stored in static itself. So these are the only two folders you actually need for Flask. Anything else, it will be auto created like uh, instance, for example. So that will be created by them. So you don't have to worry about it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So the next thing we need to do is we need to create a virtual environment. So we'll do Python m vnf, and I'll name the folder also vnf. All right, so it's done. As you can see, there's a VN folder, but you can see in my git, uh, git status, nothing is being shown. This is because I have this VN uh, text stored in the git ignore file, so it is ignoring this folder so because we don't need to version control this. But what we need to version control is the file uh, requirements.txt. So right now we don't have it, but we'll create it. So first, let's activate the virtual environment all right so as you can see now i am in the virtual environment 
So if I do which Python, it will say it's inside this so virtual environment. Okay. So now I need to install a few things. So let's say I want Flask. I would want Jinja. Although I think Flask automatically installs that. I will want Flask SQL Alchemy. And Flask RESTful is required, but I'm not going to do API now. Let's just keep it installed. And that should be it. So I think Workzig is already a dependency of all these but I can keep it I'll also install uh, python.pnb I think that's the name yeah python.pnb that should be enough now let me just do these one by one So, oh, it, uh, the name is Jinja2 and it's already installed because of Flask so, and so is Workzoo so I don't need to install on that. I'll install Flask SQL Alchemy. So make sure it's Flask SQL Alchemy and not just SQL Alchemy because this is basically a wrapper on top of SQL Alchemy. So this will install SQL Alchemy also but it will also install Flask SQL Alchemy and we will be using this because it's much easier to work with. I'll also install flask restful and python.env. Alright, so once I've installed all this, I need to do is pip freeze. So this generates this versioned list of dependencies we have. So that I'll just redirect to requirements.txt. So now as you can see I have four files. So this file is now created and if I cat it you can see this has all these stored in it and you can see now my git has some updates so in my status it says this is an untracked file so i'll just add it and i'll commit it and say added or add requirements.txt all right then i can push it all right so the boilerplate work is more or less done now the only thing left is we need to create main.py or some people like to call it app.py so we'll create this app.py and we'll also create a .env file so a .env file is a file where we store secrets so things we don't want to share to others but then we want to store it so the code should be able to access this data but we don't want to have it in the code itself because then we can't share the code also with anyone and they'll get to know our secret so we'll create this file and we won't share this file with anyone so if you don't want to share something with anyone we just add it to the git ignore so i'll just add dot env so you can see if i don't save it so the git status says we have two untracked file do you, what do you want to do with this but if i add the dot env here and save then the it now no longer cares about the .env. It says okay, app.py is a new file, and also the git ignore file is edited now. Okay, so that's fine. Now let's just see what we use for the .env. I don't remember. All right, so these are a few things which we can store there. Obviously, we can edit in the code itself, but it's easier to just do it in the env. All right, so. I'll just go through what these mean. So flask debug equals true. Uh, yeah, flask debug equals true. So this means that whenever we are running the flask application, uh, if you're changing anything, it will auto reload and auto restart the server. So that is a good thing to use in debugging, but then when you're publishing it, make sure to make it false again. App.py, so this lets, so uh, one way people run this is using python app.py but then another way is to, to do flask run so if you want to do flask run then you have to mention what is the starting point of your application secret key ah yes so this has to be totally random 
and you're not supposed to share it with anyone this secret key is basically read by the uh, flask uh, secrets like works you can all so if you are not using it you don't need it but yeah if a secret key is required you have to store it and it's preferred to store it in a dot env instead of directly in the code all right so let me delete it for now i'll generate it later okay so sql alchemy database ui obviously we need a place to store the database so i'm just storing it directly in a db.sqlite3 file but as you will see it will create a folder name instance and then store it inside there and this track modification is something which sometimes gives uh, errors so we're just storing it as false so that it doesn't give us any error all right okay so the secret key uh, one way to generate it is so I'll just get. So I've done it already earlier, so I am not uh, going to write it again. I'll just refer to my original way of doing it. Yeah. Okay. So what we do is, yeah, these we can do later. basically this one yeah so what it what this code does is we're basically just storing secret key equals and then so this has to be in a echo i believe yeah secret key equals and then we are taking the current date so the current second and the current nanosecond so this will always be different whenever you are running it so this will never be same and then um passing it through SHA-512 sum so that will create a like fixed length like if uh, I'll just show it once, once again yeah so if I just run date so this gives me the current second so if you run it very quickly two times or three times it can come same but then if I give the nanosecond also this will always change so no matter how fast you're running it okay now if we are passing it through sha 512 sum so this itself can be good enough but then just to make it cryptographically obscure enough i'm running it through sha 512 and then i'm just removing this last part using cut so you don't need to know how to do all these so this will anyway learn in uh, system commands course but then yeah, i'm basically taking this part which is which will always be di different whenever you're running it so as you can see every time i'm running it i'm getting a totally random string and i'm taking that string and i'm storing it as secret key equals and then storing it in dot env so now you can see in our dot env we just have four lines and we don't have the secret but once i run it uh, then we have the fifth line secret key all right so the env is set up now we will uh, start working on the main uh, folder all right so yeah as you can see we already have a few files so nothing to get overwhelmed with so we just need to worry about the app.py right now okay so We'll start off with importing a few important libraries. So we'll do from Flask import Flask. And yeah, so Copilot is like you may also want render template request and all. So right now I'll take those, but I may not require some, so I'll remove it later. Yeah, so another thing is using Copilot is like a two-edged sword. So you want it to help you. So you can use it to help you code along, but then you want your code to be your own. So you need to know how your code is working. If everything is written by Copilot, then you will fail the Viva in the end. All right. So yeah, from SQL Alchemy, I want SQL Alchemy. So that's pretty much it. So now I'll create a, yeah app equals Flask app and then DB equals SQL Alchemy app. And now we need the routes. So 
the config I'll not do it like this so what I'll do is so you can do it here also but just to make it like easier to read I'll create a config.py which will do nothing much but it, what it will do is from python.env or I think it's just .env import load.env and it will just do load.env so what this will do is everything which is in my env it will now store in the os env so i also need import os yes and now what i'll do is i'll just uh, so i don't want a class for all this what i'll do is i'll import app and db and here i'll just set app dot yeah app dot config SQL alchemy database URI so we are already storing it in the env file here so that will automatically come to the os.env using this load env and then from os.env I am storing it into the app.config alright so I guess we have something else also yeah track modification and secret key so I'll just do all of them one by one track modification is os. Get env it's gonna give me track modification and secret key is secret key yeah i don't think we need to store the yeah these two are not required so these are required by the flask run directly okay so the config is done and here what we'll do is we'll do import config so what this will do is this will basically run this config file so the app is now configured all right so now we need to store the models uh, what I'll do later is move this models to a separate models.py file but for now let's say we just start writing it here okay so the user the user will have one second yeah the user will have a user id a username a password and a name so let's start we'll have id equals tv dot column db dot integer because uh, id is an integer and it is primary key yes then we'll have username because db dot column that will be a string yes and it has to be unique it is not nullable yeah although i think 80 is too long i'll limit it to 32 okay next we have password hash so that will be a column of uh, let's say 512 because I may so the B crypt I don't know how long it is I guess it will be b b less than 512 only okay all right so and the last thing is name so that is obviously thing and nullable let's say is true okay that's done next we will create the So the product is a db dot model. It will have an ID. It will have a name, which is yeah, 64 is enough. We don't need a description. Uh, we don't need an image. We need a category ID. So this will be a column, which is a foreign key to the table category dot ID. So here I'm not explicitly saying under table name equals product but it is implied so if you have a class with capital p then the table name will be small p but just for the sake of completeness i can add table name is user table name is product so now it totally makes sense that uh, db.foreignkey category.id and it's not nullable after category we also have quantity so sorry yeah quantity which is an integer and non nullable and yeah we have the price and then we have the manufacturing date so this is a date field and this is also not relevant okay now in the category we'll have the model and this will also have the table name category it will have the id and it will have the name so it does not have anything else in the table however 
because this is a ORM so we can add some virtual columns which is not part of the actual table but it will help us use the ORM more easy so what I'll add is a relationship relationships so here we'll have yeah products is a DB dot relationship to the product table the backref is category so here the category ID we can use to get the ID but then if we use some product dot category then we can directly get the object and obviously in this category if we do dot products then we'll get a list of all the products and lazy is true yeah so we don't want it to load without me requiring it so only when I'm calling it it will load it so for a category that's enough for now but later we'll add so next is class cart so cart is also a model this will have an ID but that we won't be using much what we will be using is so that ID is just to uniquely identify it but then we will have a user ID which is a foreign key to user we'll have a product ID which is a foreign key to the product and then we'll have a quantity not quit quantity so quantity will be an integer which is also not nullable and that's more than enough okay next we'll have the uh, so I don't think we have any relationship we'll see okay so for the orders we'll have uh, ID we'll have user ID product ID quantity same as the cards but we'll also have the price because as I said the price will be changing later on so we want to store the price and the date time so it's telling order date I mean let's, let's make it date time instead so it will be db dot date time all right so as you can see uh, chat GPT will give you recommendations but <laughs> you need to be uh, well proficient enough in the technology to know when the suggestion is correct and when it's wrong so it was telling me db dot date but I actually want db dot date time so I change the name and let it write it db dot date time all right so yeah, we're done with all the models now all right so uh, we are currently at a point where we can now run this file and see if we have done everything correctly so most probably everything is fine but if something is not correct then it's uh, it will tell us and we can troubleshoot it now instead of later and then be more confused so i just run flask run okay and as you can see there are some errors so the main error is when we are uh, running this uh, db.sqlalchemy app the okay so these variables which we have set in config they are not set uh, when we are doing this so basically the db initialization has to be done after setting the config okay, and this should fix it yeah so as you can see now it's running and if you see on the left side we now have a folder instance folder so right now it's empty but this will basically create the uh, db.sqlite3 so this file mm, sorry. yeah uh, this file db.sqlite3 so that will be created in this folder so right now it's not required so it's not created so before we create the routes uh, what i'll do is i'll just move the models into a separate file called models.py so it's easier to make all the changes so what I'll do is I'll delete this from here and then I'll create a new file models so not in the instance folder but uh, in the main root we will create a models.py file and we'll paste it here so a few things will break so right now it's asking me what is SQL alchemy so I'll just say SQL alchemy is nothing but from flask SQL alchemy import SQL alchemy uh, yeah it has to be underscore in here okay and then it's asking what is app so right now here I have to say app is nothing but 
the app which is declared in the app.py file so it may look a little confusing this from app means from the file called app.py and import app means import this variable which is declared there okay so but as we saw the db has to be initialized after so after import will do import models and this should in theory at least uh, work exactly the same yeah so as you can see it starts ready so yeah that's it now we'll have to create the routes so i'll follow the same direction for routes also so I was, uh, thinking i will write all the routes here then move it but now I guess you are more or less familiar with how to do that so I will just directly say import routes and I will create a routes file and here so first of all we have to import a few things from flask so from flask we will import all these and then from so I don't think we need SQL alchemy but what we do need is from models import db and all the uh, models as well so user product category card order etc next what we need is the app itself from app import app right so now we have everything we need so we can start by creating okay so we don't need flask login so we'll start by creating a route app dot route to the uh, home page so the home page it will be basically yeah, basically be def index and what we'll do here so for now let's just uh, see if it's working we'll do a uh, simple render template index and now we'll create a new file in the templates folder called index.html and this will be a simple html so I'll just use emmet to make the boilerplate and so we won't be using this but this is just to see if this is working all right so let's say i do a h1 all right so let's just run this and see if it's working okay it's running on this url so i'll just open it here and yeah it's working hello world great now this is step one step two is create the rest of the project yeah so one thing i'll do is in jinja so if we go to jinja documentation uh, not here so if we go to yeah Uh, these extends and include and import so these are all similar things but what we want is so not include but extends so basically what we will do is we'll create a layout like this with a few placeholders like content and title and footer so we may not use footer but then yeah and this will will write once so as you can see this is a little ugly so we don't want to keep on writing the html boilerplate everywhere so we'll just create this layout once so let me just delete this index and we'll create in the templates a new file layout.html now this layout will this layout will have the boilerplate and here in the title what I'll do is I'll create a block title and inside the block title so if nothing is provided I'll just uh, I don't need so many conditions I'll just write Google. that is my title alright next so the title part is done I need a uh, style yeah so what I'll do is I'll create a style block and so 
here it, our uh, style tags will be stored next in the body so this will be block content and then we'll have a block script also all right so that's pretty much it so we can edit the title of each page we can edit the style of each page we can edit the content of each page and we can also add some custom scripts if you want so that seems more or less enough for the layout right now so the next thing we'll do we'll create this uh, so either we can start by creating this nav bar or we can just start with the login page so let's start with the login page itself so what we'll do is we'll create a template login.html and here we will include the layout or rather will extend from the layout so here uh, because I have the Jinja extension I can just write j.extends so if I do j.extends it will give me the extends thing the way of extending thing in Jinja and here I want to extend the layout.html so that's fine and now if I let's say in the block content or let's say in the title I write login sorry yeah. and in the block content I will basically just do a hello world now And I'll end the block. All right. So now, if we reload this page, it will be no index. But if we go to login, actually we have to create the route first. So if if we create the route, app dot route slash login, then if we just render the login.html so it will reload and if you go to login now we will see the login alright so let's just create the template first and we will do the controller after that so how should the login page look so as we discussed the login page will have a form so let's add the form first so uh, first let's add a heading which will say login and then we'll add a form now the action of this form is basically the link to which it will go and if you don't set it it will basically go to the same so I'll not set it alright but the method has to be post Now in the form, we'll have the two inputs, username and password. So first we'll have a label, which is for username, and we'll say username, or in capital username. Next we'll have the input type, input text, which will be of the name username and of the id username so this id is what will be passed to the uh, controller when we are submitting the form all right so next we'll add a br and then we'll add the label for password password and then we'll add the input password password okay so if we reload the page now we should get the inputs but as you can see it's looking very ugly so what we'll do now is instead of styling everything by our own we'll just do bootstrap so we'll go to getbootstrap.com we'll <coughs> go to the documentation 
and the simplest way to include it is by including the CDN so I'll add this which is the style sheet in our layout.html itself so for all, all pages will have this so here I'll add it uh, yeah all right yeah so we will add the bootstrap here and we will also add the bootstrap scripts so this uh, this one is a bundle so we'll add this and we'll add it here itself in the header before the well it's after this time so here I'll add this and what I'll do is I'll make it defer so what defer does is it runs the script only after the entire body has been run so it's the same as putting it in the end of the body all right so now if you can see the if the page looks a little better the text is serif uh, sans serif instead of serif but uh, most of the thing looks still ugly so for that we'll have to add a few classes in the inputs and the labels so what we'll do is for the label actually we have to close the input also uh, not the form but the input so I guess it's auto closing all right and I think we can put the entire thing inside the label yeah and same for this so just delete this and put it here so all right now So for the label, it has to be cla class equals form label, I guess, one second. And the input, it will be form control. that we'll close it so now as you can see it looks way better and all the focus and all is also looking better we'll do similarly for this so one second let me just open the documentation and search for form all right so as you can see the label has to be form label so that is correct and the input has to be form control so that is also we have done so we'll do the same for this one also looking a little better now what we'll do is we'll create a few styles here so let's just add the not the script but the style style will add a style tag I don't care about the body color but what we'll do is we'll make it a container actually we can do it in the layout itself so 
the entire content will surround it so I'll select it I'll do wrap with abbreviation and I'll do container so now uh, let me just close the style tag yeah and the block yeah so now as you can see everything has a left and right padding that is because of the container but I also want some inner styling so I want uh, let's say the form uh, let's see what the suggestion was so let's see the suggestion yeah but I don't like the body color so I'll remove this and the form we have the width of 50% margin zero auto so zero is the top bottom and auto is the left right but we don't need this uh, we can do this let's say with 25 percent all right and actually we can do this in a better way so i'll remove this and the h1 we want a text align center that's fine so what i'll do is I'll add a let's say top margin in here all right and the form let's say I make it display facts and flex direction column yeah then it will span the entire size so now I can just increase the font size if I want or I can decrease the width so let's change the uh, yeah, make it center aligned so now it won't span the entire but it will now be in the center and I can also add the margin top actually the margin top thing we can do directly in bootstrap so here I'll create a class <coughs> and I'll make margin start or margin top 5 so this will add a 5 amount of margin on the top so this is looking more or less uh, good enough but we can obviously add more styles so next thing is we'll add a button so we'll add a uh, input and I don't think we need this BR. Okay, so we'll add a uh, input submit and the value will be login. In this we'll add the class of button and then button success. So this is a bootstrap so that will give us this green color button all right so i think this is enough for the login uh, maybe we can add a border and that should be okay this doesn't look good at all so remove it yeah this is good enough next we'll design the register page which will be similar to this okay so the login page is done now we'll similarly create the register page so i'll just copy this and i'll paste it here in this folder and I'll call it register all right so most things will be the same so username will be there but we'll also have a name field will be name and 
this will also be name and this will also be seven. yeah this will also be name all right so and the buttons text will be register okay so let's see in the controller in the routes we'll just create a similar route all right and yeah here we'll return the register template okay so let's see if we go to register yeah basically that's all we need uh, one more thing we have to do is I have to mark all of them as required although it's pretty easy to bypass front-end validation we should still have some form of front-end validation as well as some back-end validation so all of these are required this is also required and in the login both of them are required So I can also add a uh, asterisk, but all those are asterisks. I'll do that later. So oh yeah, and the heading should be register. Fine. So the register and the login pages are done. I now have to create a top nav bar which will link to the register and the login page. All right. So let me just create a nav for auth because this will be separate from the normal navigation and let me just include that in the login so at the top but actually no let me just include that in the layout before the container okay so I'll just include nav auth dot html all right so right now this will make no difference because nav auth is empty but we'll now here create a nav bar and in this we will just have uh, so we can just see the navbar from the bootstrap and we can copy this navbar uh, although this has too many items so let's just find a good one yeah let's copy this one and we'll paste it here so all right let's see okay so the first thing we need to do is change this href to home and the name of that is grocery uh, if we want to make it responsive we would want to have the toggler but I mean uh, it doesn't hurt us to keep it there but it is not required for the mad one uh, either way I'll keep it there and then in the collapsible we'll have so we'll just have two so first one will be login and the second one will be register and uh, we don't know in which they are because this is a 
layout common layout so and in this what we'll do is we'll do url form we just need to give the name of the controller here so the name of the login controller is login because uh, this function's name is login and similarly for the register so we don't have to remember the url uh, let it be defined by the decorator and here we just do url for and we just give the name of the method which is register and this will automatically set the url accordingly all right so we don't need pricing and we don't need this disabled okay so now it should be working uh, there's a hmm, what did I miss all right we missed uh, closing brackets here in this okay so we have this but it is not going to the end of the window so we can just set the width to be 100 percent in this so i think it's because of this container fluid uh, although container fluid should take the entire thing so in the layout just inside the body we have this and I'll add a style here where I'll make the margin 0 and the padding zero. Alright. And in this I'll make the nav bars width to be 100 percent let's see yeah so it's working now although i think there's still some gap on the top okay so it's a uh, it's the padding of the nav bar element diff dot nav bar so I just have to set the padding to be zero here. All right, it's working. And actually, the problem is we have two things with the class map bar. I'll just remove this div. And yeah, now it should be working fine now the login goes to the login page and the register goes to the register page perfect okay so now is a good time to stop creating the views and then create the controllers also so we can keep on creating all the pages first but then that won't be a really good decision so what i'll do is i'll create the controllers for the login and the register pages so you can obviously add it in this so you can set methods equals get and post or you can also create a separate method i think let me check so for the login if i want app dot route slash login and the 
methods equals post and I name it login post let me see if it works all right so it seems to be working if I go to login it is there and yeah we just have to redirect it to something else This page is working and okay. We'll direct to your for index. Uh, let's say I just return. Oh, we have to return this. Yeah. And yeah, index that I deleted that, but basically it works. So if I say return hello, then not this, but so the post is working so what I will do now is when I am posting to the login page that means I want to log in so first I'll get the parameters which they have passed so the parameters are username and password so username equals uh, request.form.get username and password equals request.form.get password ok so now that I have the username and password I have to check if it is the valid credential in the database so how do we do that one way is so we'll get the user using the user dot uh, filter by and username equals username dot first so anyway username is a unique I guess let me check in the models Ah, yeah user is unique so anyway if we are doing filter by we'll just get one so now we'll check if not user so if the user does not exist that means uh, yeah so I'll just flash a message that please check your login details and try again uh, so if even if the password is wrong, actually no let me not give a vague message let me give a good message that user does not exist ok so that is a message which we are sending and we are redirecting again to the login page alright now if the user exists but the password is wrong so this method check password but we don't have any check password so we will basically create this so yes even in models like uh, SQL alchemy models we can create methods this is because this is in the end just a class so we can create methods so I'll create the check password and the process will be so this is obviously not right so we can't check a password and a pass hash right so what we'll do is we will first here import workseek dot security and then here actually no I'll import the methods directly from workseek.security import generate password hash and check password hash alright actually I don't need generate password hash here but I'll need that in the register so here I'll do check password hash self dot pass hash and the password so this will return if the password is correct or not so if the password is not correct so user dot check password is returning false then we'll obviously flash another message we'll say incorrect password and we'll again return redirect all right so if both are correct that means uh, login successful so if the login is successful then we will redirect them to the main page which we have not created yet but we'll basically redirect them to the user uh, index which is here all right let's just for the time being keep a uh, index.html and i'll just j.x 
extends layout.html and so this is home and in content I'll just say hello and I'll end the block all right so now if I give the correct one it should log it, log me in uh, sorry it should be user dot query so yeah we can't do user dot so it has to be user dot query dot I think one second yeah user dot query dot filter by so now if we do this uh, it will say no such table because our database is not created so for that what we can do is in the models we can just create the tables if they are not existing so we'll do create table create create database if it doesn't exist yeah all right so another way to do this so one way we saw is app dot app context dot push but if you don't want to push another way we can do is we can just require it so in this uh, before doing db dot create all we'll say with app dot app context so only if we have app dot app context so this will request the context and then we'll create all so right now as you can see i don't have the instance and we have the create all so if i run it now as you can see the instance is created and we have the db which has all the tables obviously they are all empty but they are created according to our sql alchemy uh, schema all right okay so now the models are all ready and in my route the login is ready but then we can't log in unless we have a user so let's create the register template as well so we'll go to the register page actually before that let me try to see the error so when we are logging in it's coming back to this page with the error as you know uh, these errors flash but the flash errors we are not able to see they're there but then they're not visible to us so one way to do that is in the layout itself we can just show all the flash so in the body after the nav what we will do is we'll show the errors before the container show the flash errors all right so what we'll have to do is we'll have to get the messages from get underscore flashed underscore messages and obviously not all times we'll have message but if a uh, flash message is there we'll go over the messages and then we'll use the bootstrap uh, so this div is just to make it look stylish but the main thing is this message so this text will be shown and we also have like we can dismiss it all right so end for end def and i think we need to have the end for the end with yeah all right so let's see again so let's go to the yeah so we can see that user does not exist and if i log in again we'll get user does not exist perfect we can also add some padding to this but that is like secondary we'll do that later now we'll add the register how to register to the user so we already have the input in the template and we will just submit it to the database controller so let me just go to the routes and just like we did for the login post we'll do similarly for the register post so it will be like this register post and what we'll do is first we'll take all the inputs so username is request.get password is request.get and name is request.get 
now we have to check that all of the things are sent so from here it is required so if i keep it empty and i try to submit it it will say please fill out but if someone sends the form from some web browser which does not do that or they send it using insomnia or something so we still need to do the background check so it will say if username equals equals empty or password equals equals empty so as we have seen in the model the name column is not mandatory it's nullable so i'm not going to check for that what i will check for is the username and the password so if username or the password is empty then i'll say username or password cannot be empty and i'll go back to the main page so let's try this out so let's say someone comes up to the uh, dev console and just removes the required from here then he can send without a username uh one second uh, why is it method not allowed oh because we have not saved this file yeah okay and if we send the same we'll see username or password cannot be empty so we obviously have some problems in this so in the register we have marked it as required although this should not be required the name uh, yeah everything else is fine and yeah so now the username and the password will be checked and actually for the login also we should do that so we'll do if username or password is empty flash username or password cannot be empty now we'll uh, while registering we'll check if a user exists if user at credit filter dot first exists then user already exists and i'll basically ask them to use some other username so actually this is not a good message i'll say user with this username already exists please choose some other username all right so now if the username is correct so it's not yet there we'll create a new user so user equals user username is username pass hash so here we cannot store the password directly right so as you remember in the models we are checking it using workzig check password hash but we also need to do the generate password hash so should we do it in the routes or is there a better way in general there is a better way so instead of like creating the password hash here and then storing that here it would be a little uh, annoying so what we'll do is we'll first create a property and that property will be password and the password itself would not be readable so whenever someone tries to get the password we'll just raise an error that it is not readable but we then will do a password dot setter so if someone tries to set it so user dot password what we'll do is we'll take that password we'll do workzig generate password hash and that will store in the self dot password so now we can here directly set password equals password and this will work because when we do password equals password this will call this password dot setter and that will in turn do pass self dot pass hash equals the workzug generate password hash with the password so now we have created the user what we have to do is we have to add that user to the session and we have to commit next thing is we'll send a message that user successfully registered and after that there are two choices either we can redirect to register page again that would be useful if you are bulk registering but that is usually not the case uh, just one user will register and then they want to log in so we will redirect them to the login page 
all right so that's all so let's see if it works so i won't register for admin i'll register for my name okay so it's telling user successfully registered but the thing is it's showing in red so that is a success message but it's showing like either so that we can fix later obviously right now we don't care so much so now i'll try to log in so first i'll try to log in with something that does not exist so it'll say user does not exist then i'll try to log in with my account but with some wrong password so it will say incorrect password and finally if i log in with the correct password uh okay it's still telling incorrect password so we have gone wrong somewhere okay let's see so in the database if we reload the database yeah we have the pass hash which is generated okay so in the login when we are sending the login request mm, we are checking user dot check password password but that is always giving us a uh, wrong password why is that the case uh, we're doing self dot pass hash equals equals check password hash okay error was a little hard to find because it's a very silly mistake uh, the main thing is check password hash itself will return a boolean so we don't need to compare this so this is where we went wrong so i think this will work now so let's see so if i give if i give a wrong password i should say incorrect password but if i give the right password yeah we are going to the hello page all right so the check password method had a error anyway so we are done with the registration we are done with the login but there's one thing left which is admin and i don't want the anyone to be able to register for admin but then if no one can register then no one can log in so what i'll do is in the start of the life cycle of this program we will create a default admin which will be admin admin also there's no way for us to check if a user is admin or not so i'll create a field in the user table which will demark if a user is admin or not so is admin equals db dot column db dot boolean nullable false default false yes by default so if we, even if we don't mention it it will be false so we'll do that and so when we are creating a user it will be by default false but in the app dot py before running anything what we will do is uh, let's say i'll do create admin if admin does not exist so here what we will do is we'll query admin as the username admin dot first and if admin dot does not exist we'll just create the admin so admin is models dot user admin password is admin name is admin and is admin is true so we don't need to give it if it's false but if it's true we'll mention it so this will make him a user and then yeah so because this requires db we can move it into the db but then that won't be correct also so we can keep it here and import the db so here the error is uh, db is not defined i'll do one thing i'll move this in the models.py all right so after we have defined everything and we have the context we'll just check if the admin does not exist then we'll do the query and then if he actually does not exist we'll add him and we will comment okay so some parameters are wrong so it is telling us that is admin is not there 
that is because uh, when we are we already have the database and it did not do any alter that is because we do not have any flask migration setup so the easiest way to do this would be deleting the database so when it's creating it again from the user it will just see is admin and it will create it so next time it will work fine so now in our database we'll have the whenever the program starts we'll have the admin and also if someone tries to log in as admin so they can't or if they want to register as admin they can't because the admin is already created even before they have started okay so now we can log in as the admin uh, and the password is also admin okay so the login part is done all right so uh, using our current code we are checking for login if we are in login and but if let's say I am not logged in and to prove it I will just open an incognito window mm -hmm. and I will go to our application as you can see as soon as I open it it is redirecting us to the index because obviously the slash redirects to this index so we are not checking if we are logged in so if I go to login I can obviously log in and unless I give the correct credential it won't let me go but I can just go to the uh, slash and then it's letting me log in so we are not verifying in any way so this is kind of not compulsory for the mad1 core requirements but uh, so I won't be using any flask login or flask security because that will take time to explain but what we can do is in a simple manner we can use the flask sessions so from flask I can also import session yes and when we are logging in so if everything is fine if login is successful what I'll do is I'll do session user ID equals user dot ID I can also store the entire user object but that is uh, not required just the ID is enough so session user ID this and I currently don't have a logout but basically when we are logging out so slash logout what we'll have to do is we have to remove that from the session so the session dot pop user id none so this will remove that user id from the session okay so we have stored it while we are logging in uh, how are we going to verify it so let's say for the index i want to only do this if we are logged in correctly so I'll say if session or uh, if user ID not in session so if the key is not there then I'll just go to the login page otherwise what I'll do is I'll send the index.html and also let me send the user which is user.query.get session user ID okay and when I am in the index so here I am just telling hello but let's say I also tell the user dot name so as we have sent the user here we can access the user here and because the user object has a name attribute I can access that so now when I rerun this as you can see I clicked on home but I am coming back to login and I can also like to make it more uh, understandable why we are coming here I can also uh, write a flash so I'll just do a flash please log in to continue and now so when you are doing this it will just say please log in to continue and now if I do my this one uh, but we didn't create so we deleted the database so first we have to create it okay and once we register we can log in and once we log in now you can see this has my username stored so 
even if I so even if I close this or if I go to this page again doesn't matter how many times we go here it will always remember me and if I open an incognito and I go via there so this will not have my details so even though we are on the same machine uh, but it's basically two different users having two so this is using some cookies underneath to store it so as you can see this one does not have anything but if we come here and go to the storage application and if I can expand this yeah if you go to the cookies you can see there's a cookie stored there and this cookie is automatically handled by the flask but this basically so whenever we are sending so as you can see if, if, if and if we are reloading it's working but if I remove this session cookie so this uh, tells the backend that yeah I am actually the one I claim to be so if I delete this session cookie and I reload I will be again asked to log in so that session cookie it's all managed by flask itself we don't have to worry about it but that uh, helps us stay logged in okay so I log in now and I am logged in okay. so that is how we manage basic security so we are not using flask login flask security or flask JWT but this basic thing we should know okay now another thing is uh, it's fine I did this in index I can do that but what if let's say I create another method def uh, so app dot route products no, not products profile so I'll just change this to profile okay and I want to see my profile so here also I have to do basically the same thing I have to check if the user ID is in session and I have to do all this and only if it is uh, the, if the person is logged in only then I return the profile so let's see now so if I go to this slash login I mean slash profile right now it's working but then if someone else tries to go there without logging in it does the same thing but as you can see the same piece of code is being repeated again and again so how can we try to not have like same code repeated so for that we will use decorators okay so let me just remove all the logic which we had for session so we are still storing the session but we are not checking for it so when we open it using uh, non logged in page it will give us an error that user id does not exist uh, let's say if I go to profile it is going to the profile so it's not checking so how can we do that so one way was putting the if condition in each of the functions but as we saw that was redundant so to overcome that we will create a decorator so what is a decorator basically all of these are decorators app dot route app dot route so a decorator is basically a syntactical sugar a way of uh, creating a function and then wrapping that function in another function so we'll just do this so this is not a tutorial so I'll just do it and we'll explain on the way so let me create a function auth required so this function will basically check if we are authenticated or not so let's pass it a function so this is a function which is which this is a higher order function so this is a function that takes in another function okay so what we'll do now is in this function first we will check uh, so first we have to create a function inside so def uh, let's say inner and we'll give it whatever arguments uh, we want so uh, the functions which we are going to pass can have any arguments or any keyword arguments inside so we don't know what arguments are there so what we'll do is we'll just uh, mark them as all the arguments which we are storing as args and quarks so quarks is key keyword arguments and args is normal arguments okay so inside this what we'll do is we'll check so if user id is not in session we'll say you need to log in first and we'll redirect to the login endpoint otherwise we'll call this function with all the arguments and quarks which is passed to it and then finally the 
outer method will return this inner method. So this is a function which returns, which takes a function and returns a function. And the function which is returned depends on what the function is passed. So in general it is same, but whatever the function is passed that will be called if we are logged in with the arguments that is passed. Okay. So now this we have created this function. Also one thing we have to do is because we are in flask and it wants every function to have a, its own name basically, uh, dender name. So we will also have to use a tool called wraps from the func tools. So we will do from func tools import wraps and we will just do the at wraps here. So this is nothing but uh, this does some inner workings itself. So it changes the name of the function returned to the name of the function passed. Alright, so now we are ready. Now what we want to do is we want to basically define index and then we want to say index is auth required of index. But this is a very uh, hectic and bad way of doing it. So a simple way is using this at sign. So this is just a syntactical sugar for that. So what we will do is we will say at auth required and similarly in this we will say at auth required. Alright. So now this is basically same as that previous case. So when we do this in the logged in it will say hello. But if we do it here it will just tell me you have to log in first. Another word of caution never put auth required in login or register because we want the person to be able to visit login even if uh, he is not uh, uh, logged in. So I'll just show you if we do this here then this basically says uh, you are not authorized go to the login page and then when, when he comes to the login page you are telling you are not authorized go to the login page. So this will create an infinite loop. So I'll just show it uh, this may crash the server also. So we will just go here and then you can see the page is not working too many redirects. This is because we are just keeping on redirecting to the login. So yeah never do this. Let us see now yeah and as you can see we got many messages that you need to log in. Okay. So that is how we use decorators. So you can obviously use flask login and all which provide all these decorators but this is a simple way for us to implement it. So we are just storing the user id in the session flask does session and then we are checking it and we created a decorator which does the checking for us. Okay. So next we will create the profile page. Alright so let us design the profile page now. So as you can see right now we just have the text profile. That is because in our profile we have just returned the profile string. So instead of this profile string we want to make it like this. So the top bar will be there and I will quickly go on to how to make the top bar dynamic. So for now let us just keep the, so let us first create the uh, file profile.html and yeah so let us extend the so let us use j.extends and let us extend the layout.html okay and in the routes instead of sending profile uh, let us sorry yeah so in the profile yeah, so instead of sending profile, let us return the render template function and in there let us return the profile.html. So we can send the user directly like this. So because this has the auth required which we created, so we are sure that the user id will exist. So we can just query directly. and we send that to the template. Alright, so in the template right now we do not have anything. So if we reload we just have the top bar. Okay, so the top bar part is done. Now we have to do this part. Okay, so what we will do is 
inside of the block ginger block content uh, yeah so j dot block content what we'll do is we will create first the h1 which will say profile and then we will create a h2 with text muted where we will say the name of the user so user dot name and uh, let's say user dot username and let's put a ampersand i mean at the rate before the username so okay and then we will uh, say uh, edit profile okay next we need a form so we'll make a post form action we don't need to mention it will be the same okay so in this what we'll do is we'll create these entries username name and change password okay so label for username input text name is username id is username all right and uh, we also need a class equals form control and for this we need class equals form label oh, similarly we'll create for so similarly we'll create for the name and the password so this will be for name and so this will be name and this will be name and this will be for password and this will be password this will be password all right so we also have to put some text in the labels so the username will be uh, new username and the so this is obviously required and the name will be new name and this is also required and finally this will be change password all right so we have all the forms uh, let's make it a flex box so I'll add the j dot block of style all right and in the style we'll make a style block in that form display will be flex direction column align center and h1 will be uh, yeah okay so let's just make it h1 h2 and h3 uh, maybe not okay or uh, let's do one thing let's keep all of them to the left mm, this doesn't look good either all right so yeah let's center it and then uh, remove this margin top and maybe we can before this we can create a horizontal rule all right so 
and this we can add it after the rule yeah this looks better and actually this one we can add it here so just in this if you make it a small class text muted yeah exactly and I'll add a amp uh, add the rate here yeah perfect so in the edit profile now what we want is we want all of these to be filled so what we'll do is I will set the value value equals and this will be user dot username similarly this will be value equals user dot name and the password will remain empty all right so as you can see the username and the name will be auto filled and the password we have to enter so let's ask the user for the current password also just for validation okay so this will be c password okay so this will be current password and this will be new password and both of these will be required this is also required and so is this alright so we have the new username new name current password and new password then we need an input button so input submit and this will be save changes and this will be a bootstrap button so button button success uh, something is not correct in here so input type so we're not getting the or oh, because the success spelling is wrong okay okay so we have the edit profile as well so now when we go to the profile we can just uh, enter the details and it will so the password type should be uh, password not text same for this one yeah so this will be hidden and they can enter so right now we are not doing anything with the post but we have to create the root now all right so we have the profile so let's create the post of that so even for posting we need to be authorized so what we'll do is we'll get the u current user from the session we'll get the username which the which there in the request uh, we'll also get the user dot username from the form we we'll get the user dot name we'll get the user dot password then first we have to check if the user dot username or user dot password is empty then obviously we'll say that uh, cannot be empty we'll also have to collect the current password user dot c password equals request form dot get user dot c password if user dot username is null or user dot password is null or user dot c password is null then because name can be null so then username or password cannot be empty and then redirect to profile otherwise so we'll also have to check if uh, user dot check password 
of the C password is uh, all right. So okay, actually I did a mistake here. So we are not updating right now. We're just storing the values. All right, and here also we're just checking the inputted values. All right. So, yeah. So if the C password is not the current password, so if it's not true, then we'll have to obviously flash flash and correct password yes and we'll return to the url so if the username is there password is there current password is there and the uh, pass current password is correct then what we'll do is we'll basically set all the details so user dot username is username user dot name is name user dot password is password yeah those are all the fields so we'll set all of them only if the current password is correct and we'll commit it and we'll save profile update successfully and then we'll again return to the profile all right so let's see if it works so i'll also make a small change so this is a little ugly so i'll just remove the new uh, all right let's see so username is this password uh, name is this current password it is autofill so let's say i give something else so it will say incorrect password so let it be and the new password i give one two three four and save so now it's saying profile updated successfully and also i get to update the password so now it's there and if i let's say change my username and save it so this is changed also i forgot to make one more validation so in this uh, sorry not here yeah in this so first we have to check if they are there and we have to check if password is correct after that we also have to check another thing that if the username which they have mentioned already exists and not for themselves like it's not like they have not changing it's like they're changing to someone else's then we'll have to again flash that this is already existing so yeah so this basically so if i am keeping it the same and then making it one two three four one two three four then it's fine uh, profile updated successfully but let's say i make it uh, admin which already exists and is a different user then it will say that username with this already exists so i'll just make it my current one and make it one two three four one two three four perfect all right so the edit profile is also working so now let's try to see how so because i'm logged in i should not see the login and register i should see uh, these uh, not this sorry yeah these cart orders and all so how do i make the conditional rendering for the nav bar so we'll see that next all right so what we want now is uh, if you are logging in then in the top bar instead of login and register it should say let's say the cart and my orders so how we can do that so one way to do that would be create a nav.html so basically it will have the same things so there are two ways we can have two different nav html but as, but then as you can see most of the things stored in this are boilerplate so it's better to have just one file so the nav auth html i'll just uh, rename it to nav.html and in the layout instead of this i'll say 
nav.html. So right now everything is the same because we just changed the name to nav.html. But now here I can do conditional rendering. So let's say we are logged in. So what changes when we are logged in? So you can see in the routes for normal ones we are just rendering a template but then for ones where we require the auth we are sending the user so for almost so for all uh, templates which is, which is which is only shown when a user is logged in we will be sending the user to the template so we can safely assume that the nav will always get a user if we are logged in so what we can do is in inside the ul we can conditionally render so i'll just put a comment render auth links if not logged in else normal links all right so what we'll do now is we'll do a, a j.f and the condition is user so if user is passed then we'll do something so yeah let's say this we'll do one for profile and then we'll do one for the logout also and we'll do one for the cart and so li dot nav item so this will be a dot nav link href will be url for cart so this will be cart and then similarly we'll have one for orders perfect so i just have to create these methods in the routes otherwise it will throw an error so i'll just try for now i'll just create a dummy route app dot route cart so this will be auth required cart and let's return uh, empty now and similarly let's do so let's do the order now def orders here also we'll just return empty okay so in this we have told that if the user exists then show this so what i'll do now is i'll move this to the end of this and before this we'll have a else basically and else yeah so now it means that if a user object is sent then show profile logout cart orders and all actually we can make the logout part inside the profile itself instead of creating a link okay and so basically profile carts and orders and in the else part we just show the uh, this so now if we reload uh, you can see did you mean order yeah I meant order uh, or do I mean orders yeah let's let's go with orders that sounds better mm. all right so now you can see profile cart orders and if we are not logged in then we'll get uh, this one login and register perfect all right and in the profile i can just add the logout button also so this will just be a a tag href will be url for logout and we'll just say logout and this will be class button button outline danger 
let's see and this has to be centered text center uh, okay text center is not working I'll do one thing I'll just move it uh, inside the form that should that should work So this logout should then uh, function logout did not return because we forgot to redirect in the routes. So in the logout after session popping we should return redirect to the so uh, index is fine but basically it will do it on itself but better to just do it on our own login. All right. So it goes to login, we can log in, we can go to the profile and then we can log out. Perfect. Alright, so now that the profile part is done and the navbar part is done, now comes the main part where we create the main page, the carts page, the orders page and then the addition pages for the uh, admin as well. So all this fun stuff all right so let's start by making the dashboards so I'll start with the admin dashboard because unless the admin adds something the user dashboard will be empty anyway so let's start with the admin dashboard so first of all uh, how to access the admin dashboard I would say the best way is just after the admin logs in he should be redirected to the admin dashboard but as you can see we redirected to slash which is this index uh, so one way to do this would be in the index itself so instead of rendering this template what we can do is so al we already know that the user will be authorized because auth required is there so we don't need to check this but what we can check is basically so we'll first store the user that will be like this and then we'll check if user dot is admin then we'll return the admin dashboard uh, otherwise we'll return this and here we don't need to calculate the user's value again because we already know it is user all right so let's see if this works so right now obviously it will still go to the index because we are logged in as my account so what you can do is you can log out and log in as admin now before i do that let me create the template otherwise we'll get another admin.html and let's just say admin okay so if i log in as admin admin uh, okay yeah i created the file but not the route sure so let's create the admin route as well. So this will be route to admin, auth required, def admin. Uh, we don't need to check because already auth required is there. Mm. Okay, so one, thi one thing we can do is we can check again. So if someone else who is not an admin tries to access this page, we can say you are not authorized and then we can redirect them to their index and then finally we return the admin okay let's see now yeah and we get the admin page so great now in the admin page let's first extend the layout and in there we will create the oh and in the profile I forgot to add the title this will be title profile and in the admin this will be admin dashboard and 
here it will be admin dashboard and we don't need this and let's just end the style alright let's see now ok perfect so we can edit the admin's current password and let's say make it 1 2 3 4 5 so now someone cannot guess my password directly obviously because it's still weak it can be guessed but it's not the default one ok so cart and orders are obviously empty and we'll fix the fact that it should not be shown for admin it should only be shown for normal user alright so in the admin dashboard what we need to do is this basically we need to have a toggle between categories and products so we can have it here or we can obviously add it in the nav bar like the normal ones so like the cart and orders so instead of cart and orders we'll add categories and products so that's fine and in the categories we have to show so the admin dashboard will actually have two parts one will be slash admin slash categories one will be slash admin slash products or we can add these uh, categories and products link to the admin one so I mean we can do that that's that could be one way to do it so when they open the admin dashboard first they'll get just the categories or products link although it may be wasteful because the link can be added to the nav bar itself uh, so that is the design decision which we have to take so let's say the admin dashboard uh, is for categories so we make h2 dot text mutant and it is categories so now we are in categories and in the categories we need to be able to add a category and then open edit and delete each categories so first I'll have to add a add button so I'll do that so the add button will be a it can be a div or it can be a button it's better to have a button and the button will have a class of button and button success outline or button outline success or let's say just button success so this button will be uh, having the words add so this is for adding a new category and I want both of these to be in the same line so I'll just wrap it with a div so the name of the div will be let's say header or something or heading and heading will be display effects so justify space between the line items center let me just check uh, space between yeah seems right all right let's see yeah perfect so categories and then we have the add button we can also include font or some CDN to add the fonts alright so I'll just copy this and in the layout so let me search for layout here along with the bootstrap I'll add the font or some so not like this it will be a link href will be this one alright so 
so now here if I want to add a plus sign I can just come here and add a so the plus should be without any circle or anything alright so now yeah we have a plus sign adding this uh, on clicking this right now nothing is happening so because we want this to open a new page I think it will be better to make it an A tag instead and we'll have to add the href that will be the URL for the action of add This will add a new category. So if you open the page for adding a new category. So right now we don't have that, so I'll just quickly create it in the roots. So now is the main uh, roots which we have to create create, read, update, delete all those. So this will be category slash add. So this also requires auth and category add. Let's call it add category because that's what we named it there. Okay. So we have this. So if we click this right now, we go to the empty page, which we we'll create later. Now I need to list all the categories which are already present. So that will be a table. So it's a table dot table. Then we'll have the T head. The head will be, uh, I think this is right, categories and actions. Yeah, so we have to say category ID and then category name. And then the number of products. And finally, actions. And in the T body, sorry, in the T body, we'll have a for loop that will go over all the categories. Yeah, for category in categories, we'll show the category ID, category name, category products dot length. And remember, we can do that because we have in the category we have the products relationship and finally the actions will be uh, links so it will be an edit link and in between we have a bar and then it will be a delete link and they are just normal links or buttons and the URL are edit category ID equals category ID and delete category ID equals category ID so we have to create those two endpoints as well, edit category and delete category. So we'll just do that. So right now I'm just creating dummy endpoints just so that we can uh, work with the UI. But soon we will be working on the controller as well. 
Alright, so right now the table is empty, obviously, as you can see. And there's nothing in this because we have not created any categories. So let's make the add page and then add a category. So the add page is currently empty. So what we'll do is in the add category page, if it's a normal get request, we'll just return the template which will be let's say we'll, we'll create a new folder inside the templates called category and in the category we'll create a new file uh, add.html all right so this will obviously extend the layout and We'll have the title, we have the content, we have the style. And that's all. So, title will be add new add category. Content will be add category. And no keys. And yeah. So, that's all. That's the add, and in the routes, we'll just do a render template of that. Uh, yeah, so in the add category, I'll do render template add category.html. Uh, actually, no, this is category slash add.html. All right. So now this should render this page fine. Uh, but it's showing us login and register because we have not passed the user. User equals user. Great. Yeah. So in the add category we don't have much. It's just text field which is name and then Save so we can just go to the add and then quickly add all those fields. So it can be a form. So we have done it. We just need to add some styling. And we're done. So maybe a little margin top. really much to do in the add category we just have to add the name so the main thing is once the post is done we have to add the post controller so let's add it now so it will be add dot route category add method post auth required and then Okay, uh, add category post. So here, what we will do, we'll get the name from the request form get, and some basic validation. So if name is empty, we'll say name cannot be empty, and if len of name is let's say greater than I don't remember category has a length of 64 yeah so if it's greater than 64 then category name cannot be greater than 64 
otherwise category is category db dot session dot add category db dot session dot commit and return redirect yeah flask and then return redirect the not the add category but the uh, admin all right so let's see if it's working so we'll reload this page let's add the electronics category and save okay category added successfully but i don't see it here why that's because i have not passed the category so in the category in the uh, admin which is i guess at the top yeah in the admin we have passed the user but not the categories so categories is category dot query dot all and now it should be oh not working could not build endpoint for edit category with values id that is because in our endpoints of edit category we have mentioned category id whereas in our this one we have just mentioned id so we just have to unify it make both of them id so here also it should be id and same here and here and i think it should work now yeah uh, actually if it's buttons i don't need the uh, vertical pipe so i'll get rid of those all right so everything looks fine just because of the buttons height uh, the things look a little misaligned so we can fix that later obviously So you can see in the uh, electronics we have zero products and that is obviously. So in the categories we need another button which is open. So I'll just uh, make that there. So this will be a TD and it will be a A dot button button let's say outline success. will go to the so what will this be this will be a product a, a list of products of the category basically show so let's call it show category and the id is obviously category dot id and the class is this one and in this we'll have and uh, let's say icon of what is a good icon for open or show yeah maybe this and we will say show so now we have to create the show category route also so we have the edit delete uh, before edit we need show as well so it will be app dot route uh, category category id show mm, yeah actually i would prefer oh never mind this is also fine so now it will be auth required and show category this for now will return null so now we have another button uh, why is it like this oh we did not close the li i guess is that the reason 
what is around here? HF class. Oh, okay, this is part of the same TD only. So yeah, it should be like this. So the C dots is not really what I expected it to be. So I'll change it. Uh, maybe search. Yeah, search should be fine. Yeah. So now we have to create the endpoints for all of these, and the addition is done. Now we need to create the show, the edit, and the delete. Uh, delete should be quick enough. So delete will have just a. We can make it just a get or just a post. So if you are getting it, it it will has to be a HTML. So let's make it a post one. So what happens when we go to the delete? Uh, so I can add JavaScript here, but it's better to do it in server side rendering. All right, we'll make a, a get request. So we are making a get request to the delete of this. So, fine, we'll show a form. So, let me just create a delete dot HTML inside the category folder. And in this, we'll basically we'll just copy this and paste it here. And this will be delete category and delete category mm. so this won't be a f uh, like it will be a form but it will have just one button which will be delete and before that we'll just say are you sure you want to delete so it will just send so we don't have a form so we don't need this and let's change this p dot text center dot text muted mm. text danger. Yeah, and here we'll say I'm sure to it. Alright, so this will send a post. send a post to the endpoint which is delete so we'll create a endpoint for delete as well category delete method post and what we'll be doing is we will basically just delete it. So we'll get the post ID. Uh, so we have the ID. Okay, so we don't need anything from the request because we already have the ID in the URL. So we'll just get the post and uh, so not post actually. This is category category equals category dot query dot id and then we'll if category does not exist then we'll uh, flash that does not exist otherwise we'll delete and commit and flash and we'll go to admin all right seems seems fine so here we have to return the actual template categories category slash delete dot html user is user and category is category okay 
and perfect. So let's see if it actually works. Okay, we'll go to delete. Delete category, are you sure we'll to delete? Hmm. So instead of P, let's make it H2. Working. I just want. I just want to make it look better. So let's slap it in strong. To delete. Delete. I'm sure you want to delete category electronics and maybe not center it. Three words. And the button is instead of success, it should be danger. And the H2, I can add a few paddings. and maybe margin all right so actually let's make its height 50% and margin auto. Okay, maybe not. Mm. Yeah, this looks fine. So the button I will center. This one. I press this delete it will be deleted and then I can again add obviously okay so creation and deletion is done all that's left is editing and showing so the add and delete are done the show and edit are left but before that so in the add what we did was uh, we're checking if it is authorized and then we are checking for all the things and adding similarly for delete we are checking for authorized and then we are letting them delete but checking for authorization is not uh, enough so as you remember in the admin after checking for authorization we also have to check if they are admin or not if not we have to redirect them to some other page so again we are we are seeing the same pattern that some checks we have to do in every method so as you can guess we will just create another decorator for checking if someone is admin or not so this was auth required next we will have admin required and this will be more or less the same so you can just uh, have the first few lines the same and then the only difference will be at first it will check for auth required but then it will also check for the uh, whether the user is admin or not so first we'll see if user id in uh, if user id is not in session we'll just say you need to log in and redirect to this otherwise we'll get the user and we'll see if user is not admin then we'll flash that you need to be a privileged user you're not authorized to view this page exactly 
and we will redirect them to their index perfect and if everything is fine then we will run this function and that entire thing we will return all right so that is our admin required uh, header now for admin obviously admin required also has auth required in it so we'll just make it admin required and similarly so the profile it's just auth required because anyone authorized can edit their profile but the admin dashboard and the acts of adding and deleting products that can only be done by admin so this will be admin required so I'll just copy this and paste all of these functions same here this add category and here and I'll remove the auth requests all right so we have done the delete and we have done the uh, sh uh, addition so what is left is show and edit so let's do the edit first because it's very similar to adding so for categories it's it's just basic so what one thing we can do is we can just uh, render the same template as add so and make sure that uh, so basically do render template and here we can just have category slash add dot html and we pass the user but we also pass in the category and in the add dot html one thing we can do is um, basically Uh, we can pass the category ID uh, actually uh, let's just create a new template that will be easy so we render template category slash edit for edit and we send the user and we send the category as well so I don't uh, think anything else will change so we can just copy this add and create a new file edit.html and we can paste it here and obviously this will become edit same for this and the name will be there and in this input the value will be uh, taken from the category name uh, everything else will be the same yeah everything will be exactly the same and in the routes we just have to have the post so we'll have app.route edit post and this also we will be admin required and uh, for this one what we will do is so we have the category which we will get from the id so fr and from the form we'll get the name so what we'll do is we'll uh, first we'll check if name exists if not we'll say it does not exist uh, then we'll also check if it's in the length if not we'll say it's not in the length and finally we'll just set the name and db.session.commit and return uh, flash this and then return to the admin page all right so edit is also done so we can just reload this go to edit and you can see name is electronics if I make it electronics 2 it's electronics 2 and then I can go to edit and make it electronics all right so the edit is done delete is done add is done the only thing left is the show so now we'll do the show all right so the edit delete and add is done only the show is left so let's get started with that so the delete is done the edit is done the show is left so how should show work so what i'm thinking is so it's a category some category and then show so we will just show products of that category and 
uh, let's grab the idea of showing for all the products so we'll just show products of a category because anyway each product belongs to some category so and when we are adding we will add it to some category only so makes no sense having too much flexibility so directly if you want to add some products in electronics we'll open electronics and we'll add there or if you want to see all products or edit some product we'll go to that category and then do that all right so category slash id slash show the, this should be admin required and this should return the render template of category slash show user is user and category is the category all right so now we'll have to create the show file here show.html and what the show file will do is it will basically be copy of the dashboard file so the admin we will copy from top to bottom we copy and we'll paste it in the show so this won't be admin dashboard this will be products of and then this will be category dot name products of category dot name and then the same thing so y y p and we'll just delete this shift j and yeah all right so this should be products and we'll also add this one like showing products of category electronics only so let's just add uh, h3 showing products so this should be inside a uh, uh, emphasize uh, I think em is the tag for emphasis if I'm not wrong yeah showing products of category category dot name only all right and the this button will be add product but the category id will be category dot id all right so because when we are adding product i will explicitly mention which category to add the product for So let's just create the dummy route now. Otherwise, we'll forget later. All right. So we have this, and show does not need a post method. So now we will have the not the add. We already have the add, I guess okay no yeah yeah category int add so we had category add so that was for adding a category so this is kind of confusing so maybe it should be product add but because we are giving the category so we are saying uh, maybe I can say add products I'm not sure if underscore is allowed in a URL uh, add product and the function name will be add product and it will get a category ID uh, so as I have mentioned here it is a category ID so let's call it category ID and this one also category ID so 
this is product slash add user is this and the category is category ID all right so we obviously need a post method for this also so I'll just copy this uh, and paste it so the route will be same but it will be method post and the function name also cannot be the same so it will be post and what we will do here is uh, right now we'll not do anything but later we'll figure out how to make it work all right so now we need the template which is product slash add so let's create a folder first product and create a file add.html all right so when we are pressing the button for category add like inside a category show when we are creating add so it's a product add so the URL is category something add the template is product add because we are adding a product and uh, it is being added to this category ID all right so let's go back to the uh, main template now show so yeah this is done next uh, we need to show the product ID the product name the category so this will be change three words category and then finally the actions uh, also the quantity actually we sh do not need to show the category because anyway it will be the same for all of them so let's just show the quantity and the price quantity so this is the quantity available and so I forgot to mention it here so let's just do it now ID then this can come here and this doesn't need to be there this doesn't need to be there quantity can be here and then price and this has to be duplicated all right so yeah id quantity price and then actions okay so this will no longer be for category in categories mm -hmm. this will be for product in category dot products and we can do that because in the models in the category we have a products so we can directly get a list of it okay so this will be product.id this will be product.name and next is quantity so this will be product.quantity and we don't need this then will be product.price finally action so for the products also we need uh, all the similar actions so uh, I don't think we need a show products so as we saw it's just edit and delete so we don't need this we just need a edit 
so instead of edit category it will be edit product and then id will be product.id and instead of delete category it will be delete product and id will be product.id perfect and that's it so now we just have to create these endpoints also edit product and delete product so just below our add product we will create yeah so just below our add product and add product post will create the edit product so this does not need to have the category id so when we are editing a product we know the product id so this will be product product id edit yes admin required obviously edit product and under template product edit product is product uh, yeah perfect and edit will also have a post obviously so post admin edit product post and for now it just pass finally we'll have a delete product admin delete product under template and then delete product post admin delete product and in this will so it's already an admin we just we can do it directly so uh, it's similar to delete category right so as we saw in delete category uh, we'll get the category if it's there we'll delete it okay so product is product dot query dot get id if product if not product then product does not exist and return to admin uh, and then db.session.delete product and db.session.commit actually we need to do yeah and then flash delete it successfully and return admin we need to do this check not only in the post but also in the get so hmm. so we'll just set product equals product dot query dot get id and here we can just change it to product all right so when we are just doing the get method directly we can say that it does not exist similarly so for the category also i guess we can do that so i'll just copy this and i'll paste it here uh, not here paste it here and then this also can just become category all right so the delete product is easy enough but we have to create these templates also product slash delete and product slash edit uh, delete dot html and edit dot html so delete i can copy from category uh, not this sorry delete of product and i can paste it here so this will be delete product grocery delete product are you sure you want to delete product and then product dot name and then submit 
and everything else is same and for edit so I can copy from the templates edit of category and put it in the actually no we have to create the add one first so the add one is empty let's create the add product so it will be similar to this the edit category so this will be add product and this will be add product So for the product what we will be doing is uh, we will be asking for so we can see refer to this one oh we need uh, I think we already have it in the model manufacturing date for the product yeah we have a mandate okay so for the product I need to take the name so that's there and it will have no value All right, mm. and the submit won't be there. I mean, it will be there afterwards. So yeah, uh, let me just create a new line. Yeah. So we'll have a price. Obviously, that will be input type number, name, price, ID, price, class, form, control required, and then close will also have a category so the category will be a drop down field yeah so let's see how we will do it label is for category select select is what these drop downs are called name is category id is category okay so for category in categories but we okay so one thing we can do is we cannot give this choice but then when we are editing we would want the choice of uh, setting it up so yeah let's let's have the option so category in category so basically we are saying the products dot add that should also give me the categories so where is products dot add yeah add products so I am giving them the category but I also need to give them so let me just make this multi multi line Alright, so I also need to provide the categories because they need to be able to select between all the categories. Okay. And uh, so yeah, we have the categories in here, but then we can't use the word category. because if we are giving the word category here uh, so we can't use the for loop category here so that is fine I can just make it something else for underscore category in categories value is yeah, value is category ID category name so we'll show the category name but we'll send the category id instead and for and let's see how to set a default how to set default value in select so i think just value equals should be enough but let's see So 
is the use of selected okay yeah so we can have the selected attribute all right so one thing we can do is uh, so all right so what we can do is if j dot if if category equals category so if this I don't think dot equals works maybe uh, we can do if category dot ID equals equals category dot ID so this is the category from which we send then we make it the value will be yeah category ID and this will be category name oh and this one should be underscore category yeah and here we'll also add selected and this should basically be after this and before this we'll have a else perfect all right so we have added the category also uh, we'll, we are left with quantity and manufacturing date okay so next will be quantity so let's just nudge chat gpt and make it do our work will it do it yes okay so level for quantity type number name quantity id quantity class okay and finally we have manufacturing date manufacture date yeah manufacture date manufacture date manufacture date type is date perfect okay so all of these are required obviously so all of these are marked as required let's see are we missing something i don't think so Okay, let's see if it works hmm. so if I go to show yeah, showing products of category electronics only uh, I need to make it smaller right, so this is the show this is H3 so let's just make the so h3 is not centered but then it's inside head okay it's it, it should not be inside heading that is my fault yeah it should be outside this <coughs> <coughs> okay showing products of and then so let's make it h five or something showing products of category electronics only and then there's there are no cat uh, products so we will be adding it using the add.html all right so let's see yeah. okay so it's a little uh, clunky as you can see so to see if this is working we'll first add some other categories also so I'll add another category let's call it furniture save okay so when I open furniture and go to add this is furniture and but I can change it obviously to electronics and similarly if I open electronics and go to add it is electronics but I can change it to furniture okay so the category is working perfectly but the width is a little awkward so let me see if I can do something uh, I think we have form select for that I'm not sure and for each option also I think we need some I don't think so but let me see okay yeah perfect uh, just to be sure we, let's me just cross check once so we will search for uh, select 
all right so as you can see the uh, select will have class form select and the options do not need to have any class okay and let me see actually this is tailwind not bootstrap so mm, yeah yeah let me try this okay no effect all right so we can fix that later so we can add the name we can add the price and as you can see we are getting this uh, up and down arrow you may like it you may not like it also so what we will do is uh, so here we cannot add any text we can add only numbers but that is only in chrome i don't think firefox or anyone else does that so let's just check Let's log in. Sorry, it was changed to one, two, three, four, five. All right. So, yeah, as you can see in this price, we can add anything else. So, the type equals text is not really, I mean, the type equals number is not really useful. We can make it type equals numeric. I think that will that is also the same okay uh, not this I think we have to add it one second input type text numeric uh, not this numeric keyboard phone uh, this is android so HTML. yeah i think this is the one input type number class real okay now this is using some javascript anyway so i don't remember what i was talking about so there's usually a way to make the keyboard of the uh, like uh, even in the mobile phones make the keyboard purely nu numeric uh, for now we can just keep it number that will be fine so we'll have like this okay and the name the price the category the quantity so again quantity will be numeric and the manufacturing date so something like this so this is in in default it's stored as month date and year uh, i think there may be a way to change that because in India we follow DDMMYY so yeah we can obviously set the min and max also but that is not required in our case because manufacturing date well we can set the max to be today because obviously manufacturing date cannot be passed today so maybe we can do that let's see so the mandate this one i'll just add min and let's see if it does uh, sorry it will be max max uh, it was yeah just max yeah so 
max equals now uh, and then send it to date. So, the date in python will take two parameters one will be the string formatter and another will be when to do. So, I am not sure if this will work let us see. So, in general it is not there we have to import date time um, date time import date and in date ok. So, if I give date now it is not working. Mm, let us see we will figure this out. Yeah, we need to get date dot today and then we have to do strf time all right so maybe we can do it in jinja maybe not let us see so date dot today so we have to import uh, like this is still now it is fine so let us say x equals date dot today so x is there it is a date time dot date object but we have to then make it strf time like this today dot strf time and then we want it in the ymd format so let us make it y dash m dash d yeah so for us it was x ok yeah so we get like this so that is exactly the format in which we store so this is what we want so let us see if we can do it here because we also need to import date time so hmm. maybe we can pass it from the routes so when we are adding Yeah, when we are adding we can also send the now this will basically date be date time dot date time dot now dot strf time yeah exactly and the only thing is we have to import date time so just to import date time all right so now we have the now string we can just uh, make it that okay so we have the max the thing which we wanted to do was change the format so let us see if we can change it here. Uh, normally is to the format, but with a text input, the browser has no recognition. Yeah. Okay, but in Chrome, I guess it will still show in MMDDYY. That's fine. We don't need a JavaScript date picker. The normal one is good enough. Yeah, so yeah, we'll use this, and let's just reload. Okay, so we can see the max we can go is today. So manufacture it cannot be manufactured in the future. All right. So let us add in product, let us call it earphone, price is 699, category is electronics, quantity is let us say we have 50 in stock and it was manufactured the first of this month. Okay. So obviously we have not created the post 
yet we will do it now all right so what we will do is category equals category dot query dot get category id all right now we have to get the name we have to get the quantity we have to get the price and other things were also there name category uh, actually it i don't think it will all right so this category id is not important the category id submitted by the form is more important so this is the initial route through which we came so maybe we can change this to product slash add product slash add and the method will be post obviously this is useless and in our form the action has to be set so here the action will be the controller url for add product post i think yes so add product post actually we can send this one also i think like that so this can also be product slash add and the category can be a get parameter category id so everything will remain the same we are sending it as a get parameter and we are uh, rendering it and then when you are adding it we don't care about the get parameter obviously we only care about the post uh, form results so here we don't have the category id uh, we have the name we have the quantity we have the price we have the category which is basically requested form dot get category and name category quantity price manufacturing date i think that is the name let me just check once manufacture hmm. manufacture date all right so now we have to check if either of them is null product name cannot be empty if length of name is greater than 64 product name uh, let me just check that limit is correct for product the name is 64 yes if quantity is empty quantity cannot be empty uh, if quantity is not in uh, digit so quantity so quantity here will be a string we have to type cast it to an integer so we also have to check if the quantity passed is a uh, in like if it is a string which does not contain any so we'll just have to check one second So 
there should be some function in the strings class which I am not remembering uh, no this is not the so there should be a library function yeah I think it should have it yeah we have the is numeric is numeric method doesn't take any parameters but it does take a unicode so yeah I think it should be or instead of is numeric uh, I, I don't want to use exception handling obviously because that will be clunky we can use the is digit yeah is digit sounds better yeah. so what I was doing dot is digit equals false quantity must be a number and if price is empty price cannot be empty if price is not a digit uh, but I think the negatives will be works only for positive integer numbers it's fine because quantity and price can never be negative so that is something we actually want to validate against alright so we have the name the quantity the price and then we have to check the category if category equals equals empty then we'll obviously flash category cannot be empty and we'll go back to add product if category is not empty but that category ID uh, which is sent is not belonging to any category so now we will set category to category dot query dot get category again we will check if not category we'll say category is not valid which should not be possible from the user side but if someone is sending a request directly then it is possible all right so we've got the name the quantity the price the category finally the mandate so we'll check if mandate equals null all right we also have to do a few things so after we have checked for quantity we have to set quantity equals int of quantity similarly for price after we have done we have to set price equals mm, oh yeah price is float so we cannot check using is digit mm. yeah we can do re dot match for the hmm. okay so let's use re dot match so we have to re dot match yeah so we have to import re obviously so I can import it here or we can import it on the top also so if regular expression uh, dot match uh, raw string of starts with negative or not and then digits actually no uh, negative should not be there starts with digit uh, one or more and then there is a dot and then again digit one or more then we'll okay yeah so if this is false so that is a very lame way of doing it basically we put a not in front if not re match then must be a number and we make it a float after it's confirmed 
and mandate so mandate will obviously be also sent as a string so we have to check that and then we have to validate uh, why is it asking me to go into a try let's see ah, anyway so for mandate we will see if it's empty but now to verify we have to basically do strf so that was strp now this will be strf time i think that was strp let's see once yeah this was strf so now we will do strp time python so this will convert back from a uh, format to a date time object so the way it's done is date time dot strp time okay so we'll just set man date equals date time dot strp time of the date string which is mandate and the format is the same yeah this one so i have to import date time so instead of importing every time let's just import it in the top here import date time import re all right so so this may throw an error if i am not mistaken string to date time object yes obviously uh, yeah we can get a value error if the first argument passed to the doesn't match uh, to the second argument you will get a value error hmm. so in that case we'll have to again yeah we have to that's why we have to put it in a try block so let's put it in a try block and for accept value error we just flash invalid manufacturing date so after that after we have everything we just create a new entry so uh, we are adding a product so product equals product and then we give all the parameters so name equals name quantity equals quantity price price equals price category equals category and I can do that because I have a backref there in the models. So, as you can see, backref category. So, instead of category ID, I can directly say category equals category. So, name, quantity, price, category, manufacturing date. Mandate equals mandate. So, I guess that's all. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. So now we, we have created the product. Now we do DB session add product, DB session commit, and we send a flash product added successfully, and then we return to admin. Uh, instead of admin, let's return to the the show page. So that would be show category and then ID. Show category and id is category id uh, all right because although we came from some other category but after adding it to some other category then we go to the show category of that category all right hopefully this will work although i have a feeling something may go wrong so let's resend this 
uh, okay so obviously the URL changed okay, so we just reload oh yeah all both the URLs changed okay so in electronics we don't have anything so we create go to plus category ID equals one and missing one positional argument category ID uh, I think it's there yeah it's there the category ID is there okay so we are passing it because as you can see product slash add and then it's sent as a get parameter so it's sent like this uh, the problem is because we have put ca category ID here as a, a parameter which is only possible if it is defined as a path parameter if it is a query parameter then we'll have to get it ourselves using args so args equals request dot args and then category ID equals args dot get uh, category ID so before that uh, we'll have to check if category ID is in uh, uh, we don't redirect obviously as we can go to add so if it is in args then we set the category uh, yeah. Yeah. Then we set the category ID equals the arcs dot get category ID, whichever is sent. But then also we have to check first if it uh, does exist. So then we'll check if category dot query dot get category id if not then we'll basically uh, we should not discourage it so, uh, so if it does exist so if they have sent and if it does exist then we'll so this one so instead of this we'll use this and if it does only then will be store the category id as as dot get category id uh, if they have not sent or if it is not a valid category id then it will be set as just checking the equality and actually I don't need to get it at all I can just send the category ID so category ID is category ID and in the products add uh, what we do is so wherever we are referring to category yeah if category id is category id then this is so this is underscore category id then this will be so we don't need underscore anymore for category in categories if category dot id equals category underscore id then value is category ID and it is selected 
otherwise the value is still category id category name but it is not selected all right so that's fine and this is now fine because we are not putting it in the parameter and now it should work all right so now the link is a query parameter and if you go here it's electronics and if we go from furniture then it's uh, okay so it's this two but then uh, yeah, we have to make it an integer and here also it has to be an integer so I think it will work now yeah, so now it's uh, furniture. So if I go from electronics and go to add, it's electronics. If I go from furniture and go to add, it's in furniture. And I can obviously make anything. So in electronics, I think we already have, but we don't have anything. So we'll go to add, and I'll add here price is 699 quantity is 50 and manufacturing date is first uh, okay price must be a number so something is wrong so I think our regular expression is not correct uh, let's just confirm once so I don't see why we have a bracket here So it should start with uh, one or more digit. It may or may not have a decimal point. All right, so yeah, the entire thing was a group. Uh, so it may or may not have, yeah. So a decimal and then multiple digits, it may or may not have. Let's see. Uh, date time has no attribute strp. All right, so mandate is uh, that is because it has to be. date time dot date dot str time let's try again uh, maybe date time dot date time alright oh, product added successfully so yeah we have added the earphones the price is 699.0 and I'll add another one from electronics I'll enter but then uh, I want to add a chair so I'll change the category to furniture and it's F20 chairs and it's added and we're directly now in the uh, furniture products perfect so now we have to just make the edit and the so delete is already working so just the edit part is left alright so we have made the add products so now we need to just make the edit products so before doing that I'll just make a few UI changes so as you can see uh, there needs to be some margin on here so I'll just go to add products and uh, before the submit so yeah, so let's say 
for this one I need a space between this so I'll just make it a class submit and here for submit I'll have or actually directly in the uh, class here I can make it margin top 3 this is because of bootstrap and yeah I'm getting the margin also let's remove this align items yeah so this looks a little better like everything is of the same size and if we want we can make the width a little less so width 50 percent mm. and then bring it back yeah so that can be there and we can just set the width all right so If we remove it, it is fine. Now, to make it in the center, so the align items won't work. One thing which we can do is have a margin. Margin. So we already set the top. So margin left auto and margin right auto. Alright, so this looks pretty much okay. And the save button also we can make it center. Uh, yeah, one second. So yeah, we can just wrap this. Div flex. Uh, I think for uh, bootstrap it's deflex, and then items center. just uh, look at the gate root strap so flex uh, yeah deflex and for centering it would be yeah for justifying All right, justify content center and align items center All right, so just have to have line here. Uh, actually, you know the axis is the major axis, so this will be justify content center. All right, yeah, that's it. And we can maybe increase the width. So this is the add product page. I'll copy this and I'll put it in the edit page and we'll just change the add to edit and add to edit again and uh, so this will go to actually we don't need to mention the action now because the endpoint is same now if we go to the routes yeah so add product post is product add and this is also product add so we don't need the action and same in this one 
Alright, so name and then here the value will be value equals product dot uh, name the price will be value equals product dot price the category so what we have to do is uh, it will show all the categories and here we'll check with product dot category id category id uh, then we'll make it selected and then here again this will be value equals product dot quantity and the manufacture date so we have the now string similarly we'll pass the value so if you think maybe we can do strp time in this uh, let me just check for ginger so we'll go to filters uh, not custom filters the normal filters and okay, we don't have a list of filters yeah list of built in filters uh, we don't have strp or str of time so we'll just pass it from the controller so this is man manufacture date yeah why not and so it won't be here it will be yeah it will be here only sorry yeah it will be here and this is the submit button so this we don't have to change anything all right so in the routes now for edit so we have nothing right now for edit So we are passing the user and the product but also like this uh, mm. so we have to pass the let me just make it multi-line yeah so like we are passing the user and the product we also have to pass the now string uh, and the categories categories is query all and the now string is this and the uh, manufacturing date menu factorer manuf I think this manufacture date uh, yeah manufacture date is the basically you have to do the product So we don't have it with us, so we will do query product dot. So instead of doing query twice, let's just store the product. Product equals product dot query dot get id. So here I can just give equals product, and so this will be product dot. Manufact uh, manuf mandate dot strf time uh, in the same format. All right. So let's see. So I'll go back. We already have this. So we'll go to edit. And yeah, chair six hundred furniture perfect quantity and the date is also correct. So let's just. Uh, but the post is obviously not there. So we have to make this one work as well. So for this one, what we'll do is we'll copy this. Uh, 
uh, obviously some changes need to be made but that we can just do after we copy and paste this one so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here all right so we are getting the name quantity price category and mandate from the uh, request and we are doing the usual validation we have to check all this this will be the exactly the same so if everything is fine now then instead of doing this what we'll do is uh, product equals product of credit get id and then product dot name equals name product dot quantity equals quantity product dot price equals price product dot category equals category and product dot manufacture date equals mandate all right so now we don't have to add it we just have to commit and product added successfully uh, so this should be product edited successfully all right so instead of yeah this will be show category itself and the category dot id will be the same okay so let's just make change everywhere so chair one six zero one uh, electronics two zero one and three let's save yeah so now we can see here electronics it's chair one two zero one six zero one so I am not showing the manufacturing date, I should show that. So let's just quickly go to the show and let's just add manufacture date. So here after the price, this will be this one. So Alright, it's empty because this is obviously mandate. So now, yeah, you can see the manufactured data as well. So you can edit and make make it normal again. And make it furniture twenty and second. Alright, so. The edit is working, the delete is working, the add is working, and obviously the view is working. So that means we are now done with the products, and now we are done with the admin page as well. So now we can add a few more features here and there, but now we will basically uh, work on the user panel. So we we'll log in as the normal user and we will do the user dashboard we have done the admin dashboard properly so the categories can be opened and products can be added they can be seen they can be edited they can be deleted and the categories can also be added edited and deleted <coughs> So the admin dashboard part is complete. We will move to the user uh, dashboard and cart and products orders so as you can see. But before that, uh, so this cart and orders make sense only for a user. So I want to not show this uh, if the currently logged in user is an admin. So let's just do that very quickly. So we'll go to the nav and as you can see, uh, we're first checking if user exists. Uh, otherwise we are doing this but now if user exists what we will do is uh, the profile is anyway always shown so but these two so these two elements cart and order these I will put in another if block and that will be if not user dot is admin so if user is not admin then do this so I'll just move it here so if user is not admin then show the cart and all 
otherwise don't show anything all right so if we reload this page as you can see we only see the profile and we can log out and if i log in as my normal account uh, whose password i don't remember all right yeah so if i log in as my normal account then you can see we get to see the cart and the orders now obviously these pages are not yet created uh, but the profile page obviously is common so it works for both all right so next we will be creating the uh, user dashboard so not the dashboard but the user front page index and the cart and the orders page all right so we are already done with the admin part and the profile part and the login part so what's left is these three pages so although these look easier to work on first but then for them to be uh, visible we need something in the cart in the order and to do that we need uh, the add to cart first so first we'll make this page and the search bar will have to also make it so this page will serve multiple purposes first of all the opening just this endpoint will show all the categories with all the products in them and then searching for it will also filter the categories and the products all right so let's see first of all we'll need the top bar so we already have that so that is done next is the search bar so let's create the search bar one thing we can do is we can create a separate like we did for nav we can create a separate uh, file call it search bar and this will work because we are just including it so anything which is a form and which post will post to the actual endpoint in which we are currently present okay so let's see uh, maybe in bootstrap we'll have some ui for search bar okay maybe not so let's just go to the form and we'll just take the normal form and the nav bar so we'll take the empty nav bar which is this one we'll take this and we'll paste it here and we don't need uh, anything inside all right so let's include it in our uh, index so i'll go to index and i will include that so the name of the file is search bar dot html and we don't uh, so it will be with context yeah all right so let's see okay so we get this but then this is inside the container so that should not be a problem so if this one is let's say a little bit smaller that should be fine but then we'll just uh, not have the strokes so we'll remove the stroke so that it doesn't look bad and the background also will make it normal okay so right now it's uh, just empty now what we need to do is in the search bar we need to have a form so we'll get a form and yeah so basically like this 
but we don't need uh, two inputs and we don't need a checkbox so I'll remove these two so I just in the form I just need a text input so as you can see we have a label so this is for search class is form label and this will be search next we have an input which will be of type text and this is form control and id will be search and name will be search and currently we are not dealing with uh, disability so I'll just remove area and yeah I don't need this div so let's see if this is working okay so as you can see the search bar is there now what we need is we need to make it in one line so uh, first of all uh, we don't have the text search so I can remove that and second of all we'll need this select also all right so I'll remove this actually I can remove the wrapping div also and we have the input we have this and we'll also have a select so right now I don't know what to put in the select so I'll just keep it dummy for now and do the templating later so the name of the select is uh, parameter let's say so this is the parameter on which we search id is also parameter and in this we have option name category and price okay perfect so we are searching with the name we're searching with the category we're searching with the price that should be more than enough and this should be selected by default okay so now it is like this so we'll just make it the class of form select okay now what we need to do is we need to make this entire thing in one line so I'll just add a style real quick and the style will be uh, I don't think this will work but okay yeah and so this is not required but what we'll do is we'll say form and this will be display flex and flex direction will be uh, column uh, row I think yeah flex direction will be row so now everything is in one line but now as you can see uh, they're just together so I don't want that so as this is the main axis so we want to justify them so this will be justify content and then the content should be justified in such a way uh, following this one so yeah let's say what are the options uh, let's do space between or space around Uh, maybe align items okay so they are vertical uh, horizontally uh, yeah vertically aligned to the center so let me change the justify to uh, center okay for some reason this doesn't seem to be working so alright I'll just uh, make all of this inside a div okay 
All right, so maybe I need to provide the width of the items as well. So I'll just provide the width of the search item. So that is called um, search. So <coughs> yeah, we'll have some margin and then we'll have a width which is let's say 50 percent uh, so I did this first search and it's uh, 50 percent uh, also I'll have to set the width of this at 100 percent this not working okay yeah so now you can see it's working and so I want to make it shorter so that will be the parameter so let me just set the width for the parameter and I'll set its width at let's say 20 or uh, maybe 15 okay so this is now smaller and the search bar is big enough and we have the submit button and I'll just change the center to space around all right so this is done I don't want the grayish background here so let's just let's actually uh, remove the nav bar and just have a container fluid all right and I'll add some padding to the container fluid So maybe I can reduce this to even 10% okay so this looks fine now I'll just add a placeholder in the search so people know what that is so this will be placeholder equals search okay uh, actually I don't like the triple dots so I'll just remove that okay so anyone can search anything and this is obviously going as a get uh, parameter to the same place so as you can see parameter is name and search is so we can make it a post also but I don't think a post will be required so directly using get parameters we can do this so now we'll have to work on the actual uh, dashboard where we'll be showing the categories and the cards all right so uh, we've done the search bar so we can also like instead of submit call it uh, and instead of it being a button we can make it uh, input of type submit uh, it will be a same thing but 
uh, the difference is if it is an input of type submit uh, the values it has to be text whereas if it is a button a button inside a form will also if it is of type submit will also do the same thing but the pro is in the button I can add like font or something like this so now if you see we can add like icons like this so this is just a uh, uh, simple small thing so nothing important I just thought I should also touch upon this okay so our top part is done now we'll do the body so that's no longer in the search bar HTML it will be in the index.html and you can see in the index.html we have this hello user so we don't need this so what are the things which we do need so in the template we can see uh, we will be showing each category and then we will be showing each product in the category so we don't need to pass the products uh, directly uh, just if we are passing the categories from the categories from each product we can get so the only thing we need to pass uh, in the router to the index is the categories so I'll pass categories equals categories dot query all okay so now I have all the categories so we can either show it like this card format or we can show like a table so the table format is okay for the admin but then uh, for the user it may look a little uh, uh, unesthetic so the user may not like it and the user may want to see each products details directly in the main page so they will not want to click on the category and then go to another page so what we will do is we will just create a uh, few cards so let us say we will create a categories list and then here uh, for each category we will create a category uh, card so this is a card and there so we don't need the show category because that is obviously an admin thing and we don't have an image for any category we have a heading for the category name and then inside what we'll do is we'll have a product uh, list and in the product list we will be showing so we will be going over for each product in the category dot products and we will have a card for a, each product we don't have any anchor tag we don't have any image we have the product info so there we will be telling the product name uh, and the so the price will be in rupees so one second let me just find INR HTML code yeah so the entry is this one so we will put this so each products price will also be listed and I also want to show the category uh, the quantity category is there I want to show the quantity uh, which is available so that will be a uh, that will be also another p tag and here we'll say quantity available so available that is product dot quantity all right and finally we will need a uh, add to cart and here we will have a uh, obviously we'll have the link but then we'll also have a uh, form so so basically we don't need a link so the form itself can have a submit button so what we'll do is we'll create a form here which will be product quantity and the action this will go to the add to cart controller so i don't think we we have that yet but 
yeah so we'll have a add to cart controller so we will do that we will send to that and so for each product the forms action will be different so it will be add to cart but the uh, parameter which is the product id that will be dependent on the current products id so that will be product dot id all right and the class is obviously this and inside the form we'll have an input which is of type number which will be quantity and value is one minimum is one maximum is product dot quantity exactly and that is required and then we'll have a submit which will so we can do that uh, like this so it will be a button success green and it will say add to cart or we can make it a button also uh, not like this button submit yeah and here we can add a uh, cart icon and say add to cart so obviously this won't work very well because uh, we don't have any styling also we don't have the add to cart endpoint so let's just create a dummy endpoint for now so uh, these will be user uh, carting and orders so here we'll have uh, uh, so cart is there uh, I think we already have the cart route if I am not wrong Uh, let me see yeah we already have the cart and the orders so I'll just move these to the bottom as well and we also need a add to cart so we can make it a product slash the product ID and cart or we can make it add to cart and this is basically the product id ok then we'll have the auth required and def add to cart product id and right now i'm just going to return we're not going to do anything and this will be only be post so we don't have any get for this one method equals post yeah, exactly all right so let's try to redo this yeah so you can see for we, we can see all the uh, so electronics is there earphones and speakers and then furniture is there and there we have chair and the price is there and the availability is there we also have the uh, quantity and the add to cart so maybe we can also add the label quantity so people know what that input is for so I'll just quickly add a label here uh, label is for quantity and this will be quantity okay so the basic structure is done and as you can see uh, so it's not there no, it's not showing in the corner because it's not a link but if we do this uh, let's just uh, make this controller such that something is visible okay so here let's say I return the add to cart for product and then I do the this one so if I do let's say 4 actually we also need to give the quantity so actually no never mind it will be part of the uh, form response so I'll, that I will get from there so let me just get that also uh, quantity equals spelling is wrong 
quantity equals equals dot form dot get quantity and then I'll add quantity all right so now you can see if I do earphones quantity 4 add to cart uh, all right why is that method is post oh that's because <coughs> we have not done method post here so we have to set method equals post and now it should be fine so if I do 4 yeah if I do 4 now and do this add to cart for product ID 1 quantity 4 perfect so the basic part of this is working now all we have to do is add some styles to it all right so let's try to now make this look a little better than this so we won't be doing very advanced CSS or anything but something that is a little better than this so let's go to the uh, index.html and you can see it's a very indented block but no worries our main concern is now over we don't have to change any of the html anymore we'll now work on the style so this will be a style block and in the end it will be a end block now inside we will be having a few styles so let's see if chat gpt can generate something uh, passable by itself okay so we have some long list of css let's see category list display flex flex column align center so each category i want them to go uh, one by one that's correct yes category with 100 margin yeah exactly so each category i want it to span the entire width and the margin on the top and bottom will be 32 pixel the product list will go from left to right so it's a display flex flex wrap so if there's like too many to fit will go on the next line and i think i just uh, made it go away yeah so flex wrap so it will go to the next line again and justify content center mm. and the flex di uh, direction is row obviously which is the default so we don't have to mention it so justify content center i'm not sure that will look nice i may change it to start and then each product i have they have given a fixed width so let's just tap complete this yeah so each product is a fixed width uh, fixed margin it has a border so i think this will look more or less fine and then each product info it is directional in column and align is flex start okay and the button has some colors so let's see if this is to our liking okay so this is obviously not good so what we will do is will so this is a better than what we had before but now we will move the quantity this and the add to cart in the next line so right now as you can see the add to cart is a separate thing from the product so we can say product has a uh, flex of top to bottom so column flex direction column and we don't have anything here okay we do have but let's just make it flex direction column and see okay so this is a little better I would still like for everything to be aligned so although we do have align items center but it is not centering yet so maybe because of the form product quantity so let's see if we have anything with product quantity yeah so for add to cart okay this is the problem so I'll, I'll change this to center and okay, it's still not working and in 
product so add to cart is a line item center so this is the add to cart which has just the form so this is basically not doing anything so that align items you have to put inside the product quantity instead so product quantity this is display flex and but th this does have align item center so let's just do a justify content center as well okay so it's not helping us much so in cases like this it's easier to just open the dev tools and okay so we can see the button has a top margin that is the reason so this but button has a margin top 16 so we will remove that okay and now it is perfectly aligned so what we'll do is the product quantity I'll add a margin top here and let's say 16 pixel all right and this uh, input I'll add the class of form input uh, form control so that looks uh, the default bootstrap input all right now one thing which we can do is instead of this ugly looking quantity and then this and then this we can add a plus and minus uh, so I'll just show you so an, instead of this what we can do is we can have a minus here and a plus here and on clicking each of those button the amount will be changed accordingly so it won't be too hard to accomplish so let's try to do it so first I will be adding uh, two buttons and I'll remove this label so I'll add a button and I'll add an on click on this and that will be decrease quantity for this current product ID so decrease quantity for product dot ID so we're getting a few errors because uh, it, because we're passing Jinja inside the string um, let's see if it uh, if it will work so I'll name the button as uh, minus so this will be basically minus so let's let's see yeah we have this and clicking on this uh, it's just submitting okay so this is not working as expected so that is because it's a button inside form and usually all buttons inside form will uh, submit when we are clicking it so what we have to do is we have to set type equals button think that will fix the issue and on clicking this now it's not submitting exactly so I'll just make the so the button does not have any class but it's acting like like it has the default button style because it's inside a form so I'll just give it a class button button outline danger and similarly I'll have another button here which will be increase quantity for the product ID and the button will be button outline success the sign will be plus so 
the class is not working on the buttons properly so we'll figure that out later uh, that's actually because uh, we have a custom style here so i think it's because of this yeah so the add to cart button because of this so what we will do is this button which needs this which is the last one we'll set a class to it submit button and then all of these we will change it to submit button So now we have these buttons, but they are not doing anything. So for that we have to write the JavaScript as well. So let's write the JavaScript here in the end. So it will be a block script and let's end the script as well. And then inside we'll have a script tag and here we'll have to define the uh, increase quantity and the decrease quantity. So we will so but the main problem is there is not one but there are multiple so we have to get which one this is so to do that we will basically code each quantity element so as you can see the input is uh, this so it has a type it has a name it has an id and let's add a class to this as well so i'll add a class which will be quantity input but then we'll also add the product dot id here so now each of them have a separate class which is product dot id so now i can come here and if i want to get the input i will just get quantity dash input dash and this should be yeah so this should not be by id this should be query selector and same for this one so this should be query selector and then we'll do the same thing here quantity input dash id and then uh, for the increase it will just increase the value and for decrease it will decrease the value but only if it is more than one so let's see if this works okay so it is not working so why is it not able to get it let's see uh, that's because we forgot to add the dot here so query selector will uh, think this is a tag name if you don't give the dot here so yeah quantity input and then the id which is passed here so let's refresh now and hopefully this time it will work yeah as you can see we can increase the quantity and we can decrease the quantity but not to uh, less than that one thing is it will not stop at uh, let's say 50 so because the available is 50 it should stop at 50 but we can also go above that but if we try to enter it it will say like it will still not let us do this so this is some form of validation now let's see how we can remove this uh, buttons so but we don't need these buttons because we have these buttons we have these but the only problem is we have a few uh, this bu buttons inside as well so but we don't want that we only want the outer ones so what we'll do is we will go to the input and for mozilla we have to do it here only so this will be moz appearance text field 
and for all the web kits we have to uh, do a sudo selector so this will be product quantity input web kit outer spin and then also the in input uh, web kit uh, web kit inner spin button and there we will uh, i don't think this yeah yeah so web kit appearance none margin zero so let's see if this works and yeah, as you can see the the arrow keys inside have gone away they can still come here and uh, type the numbers but uh, they will be now be using the buttons primarily so real quick let's just fix a few more things so the width is too much let's make it um, 4m okay 4m is even more so 3m okay and I'll add a margin to the both the sides. So margin for the top nothing but for the left and right some 8 pixels alright and the add to cart I'll move it to the next line. So let me just come over here and these th uh, button and input we will I'll just wrap it in a uh, div which I'll call it quantity buttons and then so now this style which is product quantity will actually now apply to the inner uh, div so this will be quantity buttons and product quantity will now be a display flex with flex direction column yeah perfect and I'll just add a gap here gap let's say 2 rem or maybe 1 rem yeah 1 rem alright so now our uh, this page is more or less almost done so now we'll have to implement the search of uh, like the search controller and the add to cart functionality so right now if I click it just shows this I want it to actually add it to the cart all right before doing that let us also try to so let's say we have five here so let us try to prevent the plus going to six and all because anyway if you're going to six it will not let us but then we don't want them to even see the number six here so how can we do that so let's see so on the increase quantity we are passing the product id let me pass the quantity is as well so that that is the quantity of the uh, inventory and then in the script i'll fetch that i mean i'll uh, take that as a parameter and So I'll take that here and now I'll just uh, run a loop so only if the value is less than max then I let it increase otherwise I let it sit there all right so let's see now so now if I increase this this goes till 5 but then no more obviously they can come in here and change it but then they'll still have that and this one goes till 20 all right okay so now let's uh, dive our focus away from ui so we can spend infinite amount of time making it look better that won't help us reach any more uh, requirements solved so let's try to now make the search work so right now this is not doing anything so as you can see it's just sending the things but the controller does not care so yeah also yeah so if something is there I want to make that selected so let's do all of that okay so let's go to the controller first Loud. okay so right now we are in the add to cart not there but in the index 
I believe that will be way on top. Let me just find it. And let me move this uh, to the bottom because we can have the top uh, functions to be the admin functions and the uh, user functions we can have here. All right, paste. So we have the index where we are just uh, taking this one, but we are not fetching whatever the uh, parameter of the search is. So let's do that now. So first we are checking obviously whether if it the uh, like the user is admin or not, and if he is admin, we are sending them to the uh, admin page we don't need the else here we can just have it like this so now what we will do is we will try to get the parameter and the search query so first let me go to the search bar and change the name selectly uh, so I have changed the placeholder to search query uh, maybe the ID also I should change to query instead. So this is query and this is query. Alright. So now I'll write parameter equals request.args.get uh, parameter. And query is requested answer get query. So uh, if someone is searching, I need both of them to be present. So uh, if not parameter or not query. So if either parameter is not present or query is not pre present, then I don't care. So I'll just uh, return it normally else so if parameter so now we can do the case by case basis so if parameter is name so let me change the name because it's a little confusing so let's make it product name product name and then this one will be category name and finally price is price Okay, so here it will be if a parameter is name, because that is the value which we set, as you can see, that is the value here. So if parameter is name, then we'll do the search based on the uh, query. So what we'll do is we'll just get those uh, so we can't do the filtering here because we can't change the actual model so this we will have to do the filtering in the template inside all right so what we'll do is uh, so we can't do this here the suggestion is just get all the products and then uh, filter it using the uh, like so it is basi basically the sql like and uh, basically the query and then both sides we can have percentage i like to do a i like if it's present yeah case insensitive liking and so this will give us the list of products but it won't be in a category wise manner so let's see if there is any way of 
doing it so i'll say categories equals empty list and then for product and products if product dot category not in categories categories dot append product dot categories but mm, this will not work all right so basically what this will do is this will add all the categories whose at least one product is uh, like that but that's not what we want right so if you are searching for let's say earphones like this so i want only this earphones to be visible so if i do this now this will only show this electronics and not the furniture but then in electronics we'll have earphones and speakers so that is not what i want so the this filtering is not possible like this however the categories filtering is very much possible like this so let's do that first so if the parameter is category then we can get the categories very easily category is category dot query dot filter name equals query although i don't want to do it like this so we'll do it the same way as we did for that category name i like and we don't want first all right i see where the problem is because we have named it category instead of categories and so i'll just quickly write the code categories equals category got filter category name i like query all yeah perfect so now we have the categories uh which match this now we'll just return in the template the same thing but instead of this we'll do this okay uh one more thing which we can do so instead of doing it like this every time so i'll get to it later so what we can do is we can just define a category outside and then for in the each if case we can assign the category and at last we can call return in the template both of which are valid okay now let's try the price so the price also has the similar problem so price works on the individual product and not the category so we can't split it directly by the category but when we are sending this to the uh, template there it needs a category list and each category should have product list so yeah so it's not possible like this so what we'll do is else we will send the so we can't do this so we will send all the categories but we will also send the query term query is query so uh, doing it generally for both is it would be harder to implement in the template so i'll just make it if parameter equals product i think uh, the term was name instead of product yeah. if parameter equals name all the product is a better name so let's just change it here into product so if parameter is product then we do everything and the so i'll just change this to product equals query otherwise so let's not use otherwise because we may change this later we may add more so let's just write it clearly if parameter equals price then we can't do the filtering so this will still be user is user categories is all and here we won't be filtering by this but we will be filtering by price price equals query 
all right so now inside the uh, why do we have a error here because we are not returning in uh, all the possible cases so yeah let's just add a else or uh, yeah, just add this one here so it should work now so in the template now what we will do is Uh, the most of the part remains same so for categories we don't have to do anything at all it will just get the list already filtered for product and for the price we just have to do one thing we just have to do uh, if condition and here we will check if the price is sent and the product dot price so here we can take a design decision whether we want to match the price exactly or we want to be that or less so I'll just do less than or equal to the price or so this is one or if the the product name searching is given and the name of the product is that so which is uh, how can we do a equality checking so I don't want to check equals so okay let's do it first and then see if it works so I'll do product dot name dot equals product okay, so this can't be actually be called product because we already are using the word product in the uh, for each iterator so I'll just call it uh, name okay and here this will be name and product dot name dot equals name so if this then show the product card okay let's see if this works okay so as you can see it's empty because of this so we'll just go to the home so it's still empty why is that so Let's add a few brackets to make this clear. All right, so if you're not sending anything, so this will be okay, then both are false. Okay, okay. Uh, if price and product dot price is less than price or not price uh, actually then this won't work because then this will always be true mm, all right so I want if this fails for it to fail because we have a odd and then we are checking for the name but then if we are checking for neither then we will do another or or not price and not name in that case we will just show everything okay so now if we are in the product name and let's say I type earphones uh, no object has equals no worries we'll just do the normal equals checking change to words equals equals okay, so now you can see earphones is working 
but the problem is if you search uh, with a partial match it is not showing so one way to uh, accomplish that will be using the in and name in product dot name so this will work somewhat so let's try again so if i am searching with ef on it will work okay also let's add the values here so that we don't have to keep on typing again and again uh, so that will be in search bar all right so this one the value will be the uh, name if it is passed obviously but if it's not passed it may become none i'm not sure so you can see now it's there but if i go here okay it's not empty okay so let's search for speak and you can see we can have speakers also i'd like to make this stick so yeah so we have the values here product category price uh, i also have to okay so that will be three if cases hmm. so right now this is always selected we can do this using some javascript so let's keep it for later all right so right now if i type small speakers a small speak you can see it's uh, it's not showing so that can also be fixed so we can just make it to lower case so let's just see Yeah, we can just use the lower function let me just see if it's a method or a function yeah it's a method so what i'll do is i'll do name dot lower in product dot name dot lower so now we are we don't care whether they're upper or lower we just uh, transfer everything to lower and now you can see it's again working all right so this works perfectly fine so now what we do is we have to work on the others so the category i think will work automatically flawlessly so let's search for nix and we get nix if we search for chur we get uh, oh sorry yeah if we search for chur in category we get chur and for price let's search for 600 okay so less than equals is not supported between float and star so that is in our template itself all right so this is because the price is itself a st string so we have to do it in the route itself, itself. so if parameter is price price equals this will be float of query okay and let's reload yeah so hmm that's not what i want so i want this but i also want this uh, actually no yeah yeah it, it is working correctly I don't want things more expensive so if I select price and I let's say give a uh, thousand I don't want to see this but I want to see both of these and yeah that's what we are getting so yes and let me just make it clearer what this means so this will be max price okay 
and the search I'll make it a little smaller so I'll make this let's say 40 percent and the parameter I'll make it a little bigger let's say 15 percent and the search box I don't know why it's uh, getting wrapped I think because we are referring to the button globally so in this index somewhere here in the styles so let me just check once So button button outline primary is working fine. Uh, I don't see something which will cause this directly. So anyhow, let's just try to fix it here. So if I remove the uh, not this. So this button is, we don't have a class for this, let's just add a class here. So this is uh, this, and uh, let's see, yeah, it's working now, perfect. Now I want to make this stick. So let's say I do search for category. So first of all, I want this to. St uh, I don't know why this is also going away. Oh, because we are not sending it. All right, yeah. For the price. Okay. So let me see. So for the price we're sending the price for name we are sending the name but in the search bar I'm just putting value equals name uh, one thing we can do is we can also send a search <laughs> uh, so this name and price are used by the rest part of the template whereas uh, this search term query basically will be used to keep the query there so let's add a query equals query and here as well and in the search bar instead of name I change it to query. Think this will work. Yeah, so now I get this here or this. Now the main problem is this one. So we do have the parameter I think sent to us. Uh, okay, the parameter is also not sent to us. So I would want that. So obviously, if nothing is uh, searched if not parameter or not query uh, if not parameter or not query yeah if, if something is not set so then we don't have any parameter so query is also not sent parameter is also not sent but then if parameter is this or this or this okay we'll do the filtering but I also want to know the parameter so I'll send the parameter as well you know this is looking a little more cluttered than we would want it to be but uh, if it's working then mm, it's fine okay so now in the select 
we have the options but now I want to see if parameter is uh, the same as this then I'll make it selected as well so how can we do that one thing we can do is we can send the parameters uh, from the controller itself so the parameters is a dictionary with category category product product and price price and actually no so this will be category name product name and this will be max price and now so to add to the list of the arguments one more thing so we will anyway always send the parameters but now uh, so that will always be sent so here also we will send uh, sending the parameter but we are also sending the um, yeah let's send all and do the checking inside we can also like make it marked right here but uh, let's not I'm sending the parameters as well as the parameter and here too and in this so the options are not hard coded anymore it is uh, a for loop and this is for uh, param so because the parameter word is already passed in Uh, so yeah let me just run a loop here for param in parameters uh, option value param and this will be parameters of param and here if the uh, param equals parameter then selected uh, otherwise this will be below this otherwise so this will be an else and let's just align everything correctly so not this yeah so if the current parameter is the parameter which we are searching with then we make it selected and everything else is same so we just show it so let's see now if it works yeah so as you can see the category name if I go here uh, it's still the category name because that's the first one but I can easily change it to product name and let's say I search for year so now it will remain at product name and if I search for max price let's say thousand so now it will be at max price and thousand so the search functionality is basically over so there's nothing more we can obviously add more parameters but for now I'm happy with these obviously if you want you can add more so uh, for the sake of a tutorial this is done one thing which we can do is uh, add a clear button so right now we have this this and this so what I'll do is I'll add a clear button in also uh, in the all right, so here only so we have button 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 
so let me add a clear button before the search button so this will be a button of type button because I don't want it to submit and this will be clear uh, not times I mean I can use the times uh, let me see if I have any backspace yeah I have a backspace so I'll use the backspace and I'll call it clear so let's see if the button looks correct uh, on and obviously we need the class class is button button outline danger on click clear search all right so we don't have the javascript clear search thing yet so it won't work but as you can see it's it's working uh, i mean the ui is working i want to make it look same as this so i'll just uh, margin left margin right with 15 percent so similarly for the uh, I don't think I have given it a class oh yeah it is search button okay uh, sorry no so this is uh, the clear button and we don't have any class for this so I'll just add a class here uh, clear button and I'll just add some style for this here All right, so I don't need the margin right anymore. Okay, and what I want to do is when I click this, so yeah, let's add a script tag here. So this is not a uh, extent, so we can't use end block. But I'll basically add a script tag here, and I'll add the yeah. And we are getting the query and setting it to empty. We can do that, but I'll also have to submit the form. Uh, I mean, I can make the clear button to just empty this but then that won't be of much use so what I'll do is uh, I'll just do yeah so this is obviously not a very good way to do this because we are hard coding the link here. So window dot location dot ref dot split question mark. See, yeah, exactly. So this is a little janky way of doing it, but. I mean if it works then yeah so okay, we are currently in this and then we clear this and we come back to this place so our search functionality is basically done I'll have to increase this width a little so maybe I'll make it 25 percent okay yeah so the search is done now the only two things three things left are the add to cart post the carts page and the orders page all right so let's do the add to cart functionality now so as you can see now just clicking to this uh, we get the all the required items so the product id and the quantity and the user id we can get from session so what we need to do now is just write the root so we already have the root which is empty so as you can see we have the uh, add to cart root here which just basically gets the quantity so let's do some checks first so uh, to check if quantity exists 
or if quantity does not exist or if it's null quantity cannot be empty and uh, if quantity is not a digit quantity has to be a digit and then we have to check if quantity uh, so we will convert it to int and then we will check if it is less than 0 we will say quantity cannot be negative and then we will check if it is more than the product so currently uh, it is a it is bound to be an int so that is not a problem so then we will check if product exists then we will say product does not exist uh, then we will see if quantity is less than the product dot quantity if not then we will say the quantity should be less than that and then finally if everything is done then we should create a cart object and add it to the cart so what we'll do is we'll create a cart object and that will be if it's uh, okay yeah so first we'll have to see if this already exists in the cart so cart query filter by user id is session user id and we know user id exists because auth required is there as a decorator and if the uh, so actually no we have to do another filter and we'll filter product so if card exists then we'll just add the uh, uh, so now we have to check if this quantity plus that quantity if card dot quantity exactly uh, plus quantity is greater than product quantity we'll then say that uh, quantity must be lesser than or equal to this and then finally if not then card dot quantity plus equals quantity and db dot session dot commit otherwise uh, yeah so in flash otherwise what we'll do is we'll create a new which will just be user id is user id product id is product id and quantity is quantity and we'll add it to session and then we'll commit and then we'll flash and return yeah so this is no longer required so that is our code so the product availability will still remain the same all right Alright, so now let's see. So I've saved this and we reload this. And so obviously, I can't make it like 51 because the form itself is not going to accept that. But even if uh, I was somehow like, let's say, if I edited this and I remove the max quantity, let's say I make it 500. So now if I do this, I'll get quantity must be less than 50. So the backend is also handling the validation. And that is the basic idea of a validation that we do it in the front end for ease of access, but then we have to do it in the back end as well for security. Okay, so let's say I do I add one. So I add to cart and product added to cart successfully. Great. But how do I know if it's added to my cart? So for that I have to create the cart which we have not yet created. So there it will list all the items in a cart and we have a button to buy now and we can just add multiple things product added to cart successfully and if i buy another product added to cart successfully and when i go to cart now after designing it uh, so it should say earphones two speakers one so uh, we can still see this in the database so let's see so i'll open the database and in the cart you can see one product is there two and one product is there one so this one is the electro earphones and the this one is the speakers so our add to cart functionality was very easy to implement and it's done now next we will be implementing the cart page the front end ui and then the cart controller when we press the order now and then finally the orders page okay so now that the dashboard page or the landing page is done so basically the search and the browse functionality is done we have to work with the cart functionality so right now it is an empty page obviously so let's just start with uh, creating the file so instead of return null we'll return render template
of the card.html and for the card we will have to send the user so I will just send the user from the uh, current session and we know this exists because it is under auth required and I will send the cards but we can't just do cards dot query dot all so what we have to do is cards dot query dot filter by user id is the current user because we only want them to see the cards of them and that's all so the current user and the his his cart right now so i'll send that and in cart we don't need to have any post because in cart it, there will just be one button and that button will be basically uh, finalized <coughs> order so let's just work with the uh, this one now first so we'll just create the cart cart dot html Right. so <coughs> now I am in the card.html here I will extend the normal layout template alright so here we will do the title first uh, sorry yeah so j dot block title and the title is So let me just check if we have to create the title tag. Uh, no, so the block is already inside the title tag. So I just have to write. So the title of this page will be my cart dash glossary. So yeah, that's the title. Now we'll do the content. So in the content, so first we'll have the title bar on top, I mean the nav bar. And after that, so let's just open the Figma design. yeah so in the cart so as you can see almost entirety of our design is done only two pages are left so that should be exciting because we are almost done in just about two days so in the cart page we will have the heading cart a button and then a table so seems simple enough so i'll have first of all a div with the class of heading and here I'll have a h1 where I'll write uh, cart and then I'll have a button so I think this should be a link instead of a button so let's make it an anchor tag and the href will be url for and the url for of the place order basically so I have not made the function yet so we will be doing it so place order will be a you can say a get or it can be a post so usually it's better to make it a post because usually get requests resemble something that can be that is inimportant so it can be done as many times as we want whereas a post will have some consequences so this should be a post um, yeah so you are for place order <coughs> and then so inside the link uh, we will just write uh, so it won't be a button it will be a icon so what can be the icon for placing order maybe the dollar sign okay and I will say uh, play purchase or place order and in this the class will be uh, button 
and button success. All right, so we have to create the endpoint also of place order. So I'll just create that here. All right, so yeah, so as this recommends, we also need uh, a way to remove things from the cart. Uh, we'll do that, but let's just create this route first. So this will be cart slash place order, and I'll call it. Yeah, it will be auth required, and I'll call it place order. And for now, let's just uh, not do anything and the method will be post all right so let's just in, in here let's return order placed so now uh, so, so the error is because we have forgot to put a quotation in here so as we know the place order method takes uh, the string and then search internally so yeah so as you can see it's working and if we make it a post now it is still working uh, but we get a method not allowed because uh, clicking on a link will always do a get request so this has to be a get request so what is one way to uh, get past this well instead of making it an a we can make it a button so instead of doing this what we'll do is we'll make a button but for that we need a form so I'll make a post form and the action will be the URL for place order and the inside this will have the button which will be submit and in this button we will have the uh, dollar sign and after that we'll have the place order and the button will have the class of button and button primary so now this will send a post request instead of a get request and we can just have the form here and so in here we can make it a uh, post again and now as you can see the button is there and if we click this we get the post all right so let's just make it success okay so i'll just make this in uh, row wise so let's have a style and uh, end style and in the style what we do is we create a style tag and in here we for the heading we do display flex and for the flex direction we do row because we want them to be in the same row and align center because we want them all to be in have the same center line and justify uh, content should be space between so now we have this and we can also add a margin top let's say 2 them All right. So we have the 
cart uh, top part now we just need to add the table and we also need to have the total so one way to calculate the total would be in the controller itself so here let's just calculate the total and so it won't be zero it will be the sum of the list which is card dot product dot price times card dot quantity exactly uh, for cart in card query filter yeah so one thing we can do is we can just store the cart somewhere first so let's say cart equals this and then total equals sum of the list of uh, yeah c dot product dot price times c dot quantity for c in cart and then we can just send user is this and actually let's call it carts because why not and this will be cart dot cart dot product price for uh, this in carts and then carts will be carts and total will be total so now we have the total and the carts and in the cart now we'll just add a horizontal rule and below that we'll add a for loop uh, so let's let me call it this and then i'll have a table dot table and so we'll have our t head first and inside we'll have t r which will be product quantity price so i can also add the category i can also not do it so i don't think adding the category in the cart is required so just the product the quantity the price the uh, total and the remove button so uh, action basically and after the t head we'll have a t body and in that we'll have a for loop and in the for loop we'll have each row for the each of the item in the card so for item in card item name item quantity item price item total uh, so item dot total is not there so what we'll do is we'll do item dot price times item dot quantity and then we will have a delete option so how are we going to do the delete so here this is suggesting a similar method as the placing of order so this is saying we just create a form and then the action is remove from cart item is item id and there's just a button which submits and it's a trash so let's recall how we did the adding to cart so the add to cart was this big method which was a post and we gave the item id in the url so it won't be uh, fetch if we are doing the same thing for remove from cart so let's just do that so i'll add the controller here so this will be app dot route cart int delete because this was uh, okay so this was add to cart so we can follow this convention or we can follow this convention uh, whichever we do is fine so let's do this and i can change this one also cart slash product id slash add so that will be adding and then here cart slash so this should be product id because we are not uniquely identifying using the cart id although we have an id 
but we are not using that. So, cart product ID delete and auth required obviously and the name of the function will be delete from cart. So, that matches this one here. So, we have to change this to delete from cart and then we will basically perform a few checks. So, first of all we will have to get the uh, cart. So, we have to filter using the user and then the filter using the product being the same. So, if that does not exist then we cannot delete it from the cart right. So, we will do product does not exist and we will redirect to cart again. But if it does exist then there is nothing much more to do we just remove it from the session and then we commit the session. So, that is all. So, I will save this and so that is done. So, after that uh, after the T body I am not sure if we have a T footer or something yeah we do have a T foot. So, in the T footer we will have a total. So, that will be spanning 3 columns that is because the 1, 2, 3. So, yeah and then the this should be grand total and that will be the total which we have passed. So, let us hope this does not crash and yeah it does crash cart object has no attribute product ok. So, let us see how we have done it in the models. So, cart has the product id and the user id and the ok. So, in the product we did not do any relationship because we thought we will not require that, but uh, yeah. So, uh, turns out we do require it. So, we will do product equals db. So, let us just create a uh, space and then do it product uh, yeah cart equals db dot relationship card and back left will be product. So, now so, this is not a SQL DB change because we already have the cart relationship in here. So, we should just be able to do this yeah. So, now the the ordering seems a bit off that is because we are inside the heading. So, I will just delete this from here and paste it here and then everything should be indented out. All right. So, now we can see uh, yeah yeah we have the table, but the problem is the table has the grand total that is working, but it has no rows. So, why is that? So, let us just print the cart and see. So, the cart is empty. Let us print its length. So, the cart which we are getting is empty. Uh, that is because this should be carts. Okay. And now we are saying that the cart object has no attribute price. That is because the cart just mentions which product it is. So, what we have to do is uh, we have to do item dot product dot name and we have to do the same thing for quantity. for price and here again for the total. And here instead of item dot id 
this will be item dot product dot id or we can do item dot product underscore id both will be same all right so this looks almost done so in the routes uh, we have the delete from so there it's product id so obviously this has to be also product id and not just id and yeah so we can see we have the earphones and so why is the grand total ending here oh uh, yeah that's because uh, this is call span 3 and this is call span 1 what we need to do is make this one also call span 2 and that may solve it or it may make it off center so let me just see if it works yeah it works so because it's left aligned it looks the same so the total is here now and as you can see so okay this is not correct quantity this is the quantity of the items we have in inventory so the this one should be item dot quantity and this one also should be item dot quantity so we are not buying 50 there are 50 we are buying two and each is 700 so total is 1400 and speakers we are buying one so total is 2600 all right so now i'll just delete this and now product deleted from cart successfully and i'll delete this product deleted from cart successfully and we can keep it like this or we can add a message that in the case there is nothing in cart so this is if and then yeah so we can put the entire thing inside a if block so i'll just put a f here so the condition is carts then then we'll do this else I will say mm, so basically uh, is this turned off yeah so I'll fix that later so now I have to say so let's say h3 with the uh, text muted and inside that I'll have a emphasize tag so I'll say that uh, you do not have anything in your cart yet all right so the for is inside the if so and because uh, it is empty it should not run but obviously I've made a mistake so the entire thing should be like this so what I have to do is I have to make it here and then we do all this and this else and this end if should be outside the table completely all right and i'll just sorry, i'll just make this center and maybe instead of h3 we can make it a p Um, 
So let's see how to make text bigger. Font size. All right. So if it's it's fs one, fs two, fs three. All right. So let's just make it fs two, maybe three. Okay. This looks fine. And you do not have anything in your cart yet. So. So the cart is done, and we can let let's say just add a few earphones and then add a few speakers. So now my cart has all this. I have the grand total. I can delete items from the cart. So the only thing left now is the place order, and then the order total page. So and once that's done, our project will be complete. So now that the cart is done, we just have to do the place order. So that should be easy enough, and it is just a route, no view. So we'll go to the routes, and we already have the method place order. So now instead of this placeholder value, we will do the logic. So let's think of the logic first. First, we have to get all the things from the cart. So first, we'll get. Uh, items to order that will be the cart dot query dot filter user current user all right so now that we have each item we will first have to check if all the items which in which are in your cart so yeah when you were placing it in the cart we checked that the quantity was less than the inventory quantity but maybe someone bought some of the product already while it was sitting in your cart so now we have to check also so first we'll see if something is there or not if nothing is there then we'll say uh, cart is empty and we'll redirect to cart uh, but if something is there in the cart first we'll have to um, see if the quantity is correct so if the item dot uh, quantity is greater than the item dot product dot quantity then we will basically create a flash and we'll say that the quantity of item dot product dot name must be less than or equal to the item dot product dot quantity I don't need this str. I don't know why it's actually no, I do need it. In Python, we can't concat a string with a number, and then we return to cart again. But if everything is fine, so I don't want to do it partially. So I don't want to add some items to the cart and then tell uh, this is fine. So I'll do it again. For item and items, item dot product dot quantity minus equals item dot quantity. So now we don't have that many items in the inventory anymore. We delete that, but before deleting, I'll also have to create that in the order. So order equals order user session ID product ID is item dot product ID quantity is this, but also I have to give the so I think I don't need to give the date time because it's by default taken as now. Uh, so user ID, product ID, quantity, and the price I have to store. Date time I will set the default. So here we can set the default is uh, not this date time dot UTC now. Yeah. And this date time we have to import. So let's just go to the top and import here. From date time import date time. All right, and so this should work now. 
so we don't need to provide the date time but I do need to provide the price price at which it was bought so this will be item dot product dot price currently and the order item is created now what we need to do is uh, add that to the session degree dot session add order and then we delete the item from the cart and then finally we commit so yeah that is it actually so for orders we don't need to do anything else so after this so if any error was there we would have redirected to cart or if it was empty we would have redirected to cart so i can't think of any other edge case where we will not be able to place order so once we have placed the orders it's in my cart history so now we uh, flash order place successfully and then we redirect to not to the cart but to the orders so here this will be orders and orders is right now empty so let's just see if the post method works okay So now uh, this page is as it is and I click on place order and the order is placed but now if I refresh the cart yeah we see order placed successfully and the cart is now empty perfect and if I go to the database then we can see in the orders we have the two items and we also have the price and the date. So this is UT, uh, UTC, so that's why it's storing as 17, so that's fine. But if we want it to store the mm, Indian standard time, which is not a good idea because the user can be anywhere. So it's best to have a standardized uh, way of storing it. So yeah, now the only part left is the my orders part. So here instead of showing my orders as a text we will basically same as the cart will show all the uh, orders which we have placed uh, in the past all right so currently our model is model is fine but the only thing is uh, for orders we're storing each order but there's no way to find out uh, which orders were done together and which were done later so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another table here just to store each transaction. So this will be a transaction that will be a DB model and the transaction will obviously store let's see so a transaction it is having an ID obviously uh, but not all these yeah so a transaction will be just once for all the items you are purchasing at one time. So we need to store the date time in that. Yeah, uh, like this. Uh, a price is not valid for a transaction, neither is a quantity nor is a product ID. But a user ID can be a valid key for the transaction because the transaction can only be done by a user so yes let's store the user id and yeah so now we don't need to store the user id in this order and we don't need to store the date time but what we do need is the transaction id So now we have a transaction ID which is a foreign key to this and here we'll have a relationship of the products or we can say orders so and the relationship backref is the transaction. So for each order we can just refer to the order dot transaction dot user ID to get the user ID. So that won't be a problem. 
but now because we already have a few entries in our order table so to fix that we can set up flask migrate but uh, for this session i won't bother so what i will do is i'll just go into the database and i'll delete from the order table Uh, I'll delete from the order table. Okay, so because order is uh, a keyword, we have to put it in quotes. All right, so I've deleted the order table. So hopefully, this will just create the tables uh, correctly. So as you can see now the transactions will have a primary key and the transaction id here it's not unique so in the order table we'll have multiple instances of transaction id but here it will just be one transaction so let's rerun the database and hopefully we don't get any error okay so it's working now so we have to make a few changes actually we didn't save it so yeah and okay it's working and in the routes uh, so till carting everything is same but then in the place order we have to make a few changes so I'll have to get everything from the cart I have to see if the quantity is fine that's all fine and then I'll create a transaction first So I'll create a new transaction and uh, as we saw a transaction just have date time is automatically taken, ID is automatically taken as auto increment, only the user ID. So I just create a new transaction and uh, we have to import that. Transaction. and okay so now we've created the transaction and now i am creating the obviously i'm uh, creating the order and i don't need to store the user in here anymore i'll store the product i'll store the quantity i'll store the price and I'll add it to the session then what I'll do is I'll add it to the transaction dot orders dot append order and we don't need to add transaction again because it's already there and then we commit so now everything is the same but we have a transaction so what we can do now is in the roots when we are going to orders I can just get the transactions for this current user so transactions so first we'll get the user user is this user who is currently logged in and okay so this is reminding us of an important thing that admin does not have a order or a cart but i mean the admin is the admin so we don't want to uh, molly coddle the admin so i won't be doing all this validation so if our admin is stupid enough to go to the cart he'll see it's empty so that's fine and anyway we don't have the cart and order nav bar item in the top as well so that is okay i'll just get the transactions of the current user so that will be transaction filter by the uh, user id is this and then we will return render template orders.html user is user and transactions is transactions so that should be simple enough and then i'll create a new uh, html called 
orders.html so this will be a historic view of all the orders which we have placed so let's copy some part from the cart.html so obviously many things will change so this will be my orders and this will be orders or my orders and we won't have a place order button anymore because from the orders you can't do anything else so i'll just delete this maybe we can have a print uh, pdf but that is not required okay so we don't need the heading also i mean the heading class and then this will be order details and then so this will be if transactions i think that was the name which we gave yeah transactions then we create a table and transaction will basically have the same details so product quantity price total but we don't have any action and then uh, we get the item from the so now we will have a nested loop so in the order so in the cart uh, let's just add something to show in the cart we just have them one by one but in the transaction we will have all the items of one transaction and then the date of that transaction so let this be like this and we'll create tables for each transaction i think that sounds good enough so let's just delete this i mean to keep it in the buffer and then we'll say uh, a for loop so for transaction in transactions and the end of the for also and then inside here what we will do is uh, we'll just show the transaction details so transaction number is transaction dot id alright so now we have the transaction header now we'll show the date also so let's let me just show the date as well and here I'll just add the add brackets and I'll add the transaction dot date time. Alright. So after I've added that, so maybe this should be in a heading. So after I've added that, then I'll add the table. So yeah this table which we had in a cut buffer so once twice it should go two times inside and so for every transaction we are showing a table and then in every transactions table we are showing for item in so this cards will now be transaction dot orders and everything remains more or less the same so we'll have item dot product uh, oh i don't think we have that so we'll have to set it so in products you can see we have carts similarly we have to create our orders as well 
so not for using the orders but for using the backlist of product yeah so item dot product dot name item dot quantity because we're storing the quantity in the order yes uh, item dot product dot price is not used we will use the item dot price directly and item dot price times item dot quantity is the total and the grand total will have to uh, so we can store that obviously in the transaction but that is really useless because we can derive it from all the orders so i'll just derive that from all the orders and send it as total and we don't need this action so yeah that's all and instead of this cart i'll say you do you do not have any uh, delete three words insert transactions yet all right and the total i will send to this using the so i'll do total equals and yeah so transaction dot total is not there so what we have to do is oh okay so we can't send one total because we're sending all of the transactions so for each transaction we'll have to calculate the total all right so maybe we can store it in the database but then it won't be normalized because it is kind of like storing redundant data but let's say to make our life easy we have decided to add the total here also and because db dot float nullable is false and when creating the uh, order we are creating the transaction here we are adding it to the here and then transaction dot total will be plus equals order dot price times order dot quantity and so the transaction dot total is stored like that so yeah now we don't need to pass anything so here we can just access the uh, item dot total uh, no it should be transaction dot total all right so we have a high chance of making mistakes because we have not uh, run the output for a long time but let's see yeah so the cart is there and the orders we have an error so let's see no such column that is because we have to rerun the uh, thing to make the table okay and now we can go to the orders and it's still not there so uh, let's see we'll go to the database and so as you can see we have a transaction so I'll just drop the table and this too is a keyword so I have to do this okay and now if I run the flask again it will create the table again and if I go to the orders now you don't have any transactions yet so from the cart if I now place order so now it's uh, all right so what we have to do is set the initial value of the total so first of all in the models we have set total to be non-nullable so when we are creating this we also have to set the total is zero so so my card still has this and my orders is empty so now if when I place order uh, table order has no column named transaction ID okay so I think we have to uh, yeah we have to remake this table as well 
draft table order and rerun this so now the cart is still like this the order is still empty and now if I do place order uh, not null failed for this transaction ID okay so instead of uh, adding this to the transactions dot order dot append what we will do is uh, here so I have the back ref of transaction so here I'll just set transaction equals so not ID just the entire object transaction equals the transaction and that should do the same trick so as adding to the list so now if I place order order place successfully and my orders shows the all the orders so now my cart is empty now let me uh, let me go ahead and buy something else so let me buy a chair uh, product added to the cart and then in my cart I have a chair and then I buy it alright so we can see transaction number one it has just the earphone and then transaction number two has the chair and we can buy multiple things also so one earphone sorry one earphone one speaker and one chair in the cart three things and then I place the order alright so now we have like this and one more thing we can do in the uh, route so when we are sending the transactions what I'll do is I'll just sort it by the uh, transaction not transaction ID but the date time and now if I reload uh, query object has no attribute sort by uh, all right so we have to filter anyway so till here it will be like this I think after dot all we can do sort date time let's see uh, yeah it's still not working so let me just search SQL alchemy sort by all oh, right it is order by correct so order by transaction date descending exactly and I refresh uh, yeah so the dot all will be at the end dot all and and this is obviously date time so it's fine to make mistakes but we have to learn how to read the errors and yeah now as you can see transaction number three so we get it in the descending order so that's pretty much it now if you want we can just print this page and we'll basically have the receipt so this is actually not much work at all so I'll just go to the orders page and then uh, in the my orders so I'll just make it a heading again and I'll add a button here and uh, this will say print not home this will be print and I'll say here print and this one will be on click window dot print yeah 
so now when I click this this will basically just uh, run the window.print and we'll get the transactions in a printed manner so we can print it or we can save it as PDF all right so that basically is the end of our mad1 project so we have the profile we have the cart we have the order and the main page where we can search and then we can obviously log in as a admin and here we can add categories uh, add products remove products so let's say uh, laptop price is 60,000 categories electronics quantity 100 manufactured today yeah so everything is done we can edit stuff we can delete and then we can first same for the categories so I don't recommend deleting uh, categories or the products because then the orders will also be deleted but yeah so we have done this and we can also specify what happens to the orders or the carts when something of the parent like the uh, category or the product is deleted from the admin side so we can set it to be uh, on delete cascade or on delete set null so if it's not nullable then we cannot make it on delete set null we have to make it on delete cascade okay so we can just add a summary page here also so that will show basic stats so we can do that i may do it i may not do it in this video because it's already very long and so one more thing we can do which is so whenever we are logging in and uh, basically whenever we're doing something the successfully is also read just like the normal ones the error ones so error ones make sense to be read but the success ones don't make sense to be read. so let me see if i can fix that yeah so here first let me put it in a container and here so for each message if the message contains the word success so this is a very so I'm not storing another field which indicates it's a positive or negative message I'm just doing a very rudimentary and stupid check which can fail easily but what I will do is uh, so instead of alert den danger I'll show alert success if it's success so here I'll do a j dot f and I'll say the word success in message dot lower then do the same thing as this but do it in a green color so instead of alert danger this will be alert success and so this will be here and this will be else so let's see now so I'll just add this to the cart yeah product added to cart successfully and if I do something stupid so let's say uh, not this so if I inspect this page yeah and I remove this maximum or make it something else and let's say I do something big so in the front end it won't do anything but in the back end it will still complain 
and the errors are red but the successes are green so now we have three and we can obviously delete them and delete it successfully is also green and if I buy something and I place the order this is also order placed successfully all right so one feature which we forgot to implement is the out of stock so it's a very simple feature it won't take like more than five minutes to implement so what we have to do is uh, let's say uh, yeah so we are here and we have two speakers left so I add to cart I go to the cart I buy and then I have one speaker left I so if I add two or more it won't let me if I do anything also it won't let me anyway so uh, if I add to cart and I buy this so it's bought and now it shows zero but then and this won't work obviously but I don't want to see this I want to see out of stock so how can we do that so it's very simple so in the index page will come here and all these buttons add to cart buttons these are only to be shown if the quantity is greater than zero so what I'll do is I'll put a j dot f and this will be the product dot quantity is greater than zero then this else we will show them a text that uh, so no this is totally wrong so we will show them a text saying that this is out of stock so let's make it a button and make it a button button which will be button button outline danger and this will say so it will have a times uh, not this actually let me see if this looks good so as you can see now we'll have this out of stock uh, but I don't like this icon so I'll make it times and yeah and so this should also not be clickable so I'll make it disabled as well so anyway if we are clicking it it won't do anything but this is just a visual clue that you can't click this all right so that's it that's our out of stock implementation as well so we have done everything in this and we have not done the recommended API so obviously as I mentioned this is not for a one-to-one -one parity of the problem statement I'm just showing a way to approach the problem statement and do everything so validation I've done more or less everything API I'm not going to do in this video because API once you know how to do it's very simple so yeah and in optional we have done I guess we have done more or less uh, decent enough for the styling we have not done proper login system but it's not totally bad at all we have used the flask session we have not done any export or anything because these are obviously optional and we only have a few days left all right so that's the project so now our project is done and it only took us two days approximately so five or six hours each day so in two days we had made a project which is very easily qualifiable for the core requirements we also had a few uh, recommended requirements also in this 
so I would say the login system which we implemented was somewhere in between the uh, useless login and the uh, totally robust login framework. So, R1 is also robust, it is basically just DIY. So, instead of using a framework, we have done it ourselves. And we have added aesthetics, so I would not say too much or too funky looking like some of uh, your projects, but uh, it is a basic and it is better than having no CSS. And we have also done validation, we have done lots of validation. So, validation is something which I would say should be a core requirement even for MAD1. So, we have done validation everywhere possible, we have done front end and we have done back end validation. Uh, the only thing we have not done is APIs, so because uh, making the APIs is uh, something which can be done in like uh, 4 or 5 more hours. So, all you have to do is just create the CRUD CRUD uh, endpoints for the products and the categories for the admin and that is it. So, you do not need to do APIs for everything in MAN1, you just need for the products and the categories CRUD. And for that you can use the Flask RESTful and refer to the Tejas GNSA's uh, tutorial on how to do that. So this has been the marathon and I hope after sticking through, so the, for the people who have uh, stuck through this uh, 10 or 12 hours, so hopefully this has been helpful for you and maybe if, uh, if you were stuck somewhere or if you uh, were stuck on how to implement an idea, now you have a, a better understanding on how to go around doing that and you can I hope you will also implement even more features on top of this. So a word of caution uh, this uh, is just my implementation of the project and which uh, will obviously pass the uh, project if I am submitting it obviously I would not be submitting because I am already done with the project but a uh, word of caution please do not copy any code from this uh, marathon. So this was just a, just to demonstrate how to think to make the project, how to go about making the project and how we can implement uh, each feature. But this is not an uh, invitation for you to copy the code because uh, it won't get me into trouble but it will get you definitely into trouble because uh, if uh, you are copying the code from this it will be marked as malpractice and you will anyway have to pay again and do the project again next time. So, Take this not as a tutorial where you copy the steps, but just as a inspiration or something which you can look into if you are stuck somewhere to how to uh, like do the project in time. So yeah, that is it, that is my marathon of the grocery application for MAD1 project this term. So hope in the remaining two days you will create your project as well with even better features, even better looking uh, UI and submitted as well. Thank you.